scandalous, and I love it. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. Welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be here myself. Hey. Well, there's a rapper been sentenced to 10 years in jail. Oh. You know, at this point, do we say good? Or are, we, are we sick of this? Or do we say damn? The damn justice system. Well, you know, I'll explain. Well, Jay-Z had his big to-do in Atlantic City. We'll talk about that. Mary J. Blige still up to things. We'll talk about that. Oh, did I mention friend in my head John Legend is coming today? Oh. Yeah, say no, drop a bomb. Okay. I love him. Friend in my head. Ordinary people. Uh, and, of course, advice hours happening next hour. The hour of truth. Blah, blah, blah. Your phone calls. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, what's happening? This is Dwelle. This is Faith Evans. Congratulations. WBLS. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Eric Benet. Hey, hey, hey. This is your girl, Angie Stone. Hi, this is Brian McKnight. Congratulations, BLS, on winning the Marconi Award for Station of the Year. Congratulations, BLS. For Urban Station of the Year. 107.5. We're a winner. WBLS. Ladies and gentlemen. It is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm just explaining the art. You just can't walk around spazzing out on people on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm good for, like, you know, a once every, you know, two months, you know, spazzation. <laughs> and when I do it, people really... I was cursed. People really, you know, get up. I can make things happen. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time, people walk around trying to mistake my smile for a get over, you know. And, and you know, and I'd rather, uh, it, it's not that I like that, but I'm not going to spend my life in this mode right here. See how I'm talking to you right here? I, I'm not going to spend my life walking around oh, talking to people like this. Because you want to know what? Uh -oh. People like me don't look at people like this right here, how I am. Like, oh, uh, she's perpetually angry. It's it, it, it. You don't even listen to it anymore. She's just always angry, you know. But when you reserve this kind of behavior like this for a once in a while thing, then when it happens, uh -oh. damn it, everybody listen and you get stuff done. Yo, you know what I'm saying? There you go. Spazzing out on people, calling them mother fathers, saying I don't care how it gets done. 
Oh. You do it. Hanging up the phone on people. What? That's when you finally get stuff done. See, there's certain people who walk around perpetually angry just like this right here. I got news for you. I'm one of the people. I don't even listen to you anymore. All angry all the time. What? You know who gets work done? At least in my mind, in my judged up mind, you know, Art's telling me, you know, I need to, you know, bark more, bark more. I'm like, no, Art, because when I do bark, stuff gets done. Yeah. I can't. You understand what I'm saying, Artie? Yeah, I do. Do you, you finally understand now? I finally get the picture. I get it. I can't walk around like this all the time. It's First of all, it's just not in me. Second of all, I like to reserve it for special occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. By the way, I am not going blind. My CAT scan is clear. Oh, we're living. Thank you. Thank you. Sushi on Trevor today. <laughs> Here's the other part of the story. Here's the other part of the story. So, um, so you know, I don't have thyroid cancer, thank God. Oh, yeah. Hold on. My office, my stomach is all tight and stuff. See, uh, this is why, you know, you can't walk around all angry like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get a telephone call this morning. It's just, it's just, just nuttiness going on in my car. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving to my CAT scan no. to find out whether I am going to eventually go blind. You know, the thyroid disease is attached to the Graves disease. The Graves disease is all up in your eyes. Graves disease can eventually squeeze the hell out of the, the optical nor nerve and, and then you go blind. My my um, doctor is not a regular eye doctor. He's the uh, eye doctor to the fifth power, dealing with all the ca cancer of the eyes, cataract of the eyes, mm -hmm. like all that crazy He's nuttiness. Specialist. That's right. So my doctor, Della Rocco, right? Through a CAT scan, he'd be able to tell me whether I'm going to eventually go blind. It could be five, ten years, but eventually go blind. Damn. So I'm, exactly, so this is what I'm dealing with yeah. in my car, you know, driving this morning. Savoring every, uh, every drive, because I might not be able to drive again in ten years. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I'm driving along, and you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to rationalize in my mind. Well, you know, at least I don't have thyroid cancer. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't take sight to, to work the mic. You know, I would have had a beautiful, you know, stretch of sight. You know, I can remember, you know, what the view looks like out the window and all like that. You, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Bring, bring, bring goes the damn telephone. Uh-oh, uh-oh, easy. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble on the phone. I'm like, what? Hmm. Well, you know, if you make the phone... I'm making a phone call. Oh. You make the call. Why is my life always put together with duct damn tape? Ooh. You make the call. And I hung up the phone and pull into the CAT scan a garage. And I got more important things to think about. Yeah. Alright, calm down. It's Thursday. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Yeah, I played down the CAT scan, but really the CAT scan was about blindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to tell you guys. Yeah, the CAT scan was about blindness. Damn. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. It's, it's been quite a week. Blindness has <laughs> stuff from us. It's, it's, it's been quite a week. <laughs> no, but I thought that all you could probably handle is, is that I was getting my thyroid checked for thyroid cancer. I didn't want to let the other shoe drop and let you know that I was getting a CAT scan to check for blindness. Yeah. I think the first one was the worst one, though. Because blindness, you still could do your job. The other one is like, you know, out. And you're just out for good. <laughs> well, they got my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Were you wishing death? No, I was not wishing death. Anymore, never. And I want you to keep your sight, too. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Thank God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's bring it back around to the anger. It's tough being a woman. It, it, it really is, and it's tough being a woman with with large breasts and big hair because your credibility automatically goes out the window when you're dealing with these damn men. And I realized that walking in, but part of it is I love to see men mistake it for a get over. I love to see it. Men are so stupid. You're so damn stupid. It's unbelievable. You love it when they walk right into it. Yes, they walk right into it. And then I unleash. Oh. You know, hair still big, boobs still big. Oh. But I'm pointing my finger and a mother father 
hollering and there's spit flying out of my mouth. And I am right on every point because I've studied this. This is what you do. This is what I do. I'm, obviously, what I'm talking about is something dealing with radio. You know, this is what I do. And I crack the mic and I make money for people. So damn you. Respect. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And, it's, and it gets tough. And shout out to the women, you know, who are captains of their industry. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know? It's tough. But if you don't, you know, if you scream all the time, Arthur, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it now. Then they, then they take you as a manic woman. Yeah. You know, you're a manic woman. You know, you know how you all like to uh, uh, categorize us in the sexism. Oh, she must be on her period or whatever the hell, whatever the hell. Mm -hmm. Too emotional. Yeah, so she's too emotional. She's too emotional. Yeah. So you gotta pick your spots. Yes, yeah, so I pick my spots. And I just lose it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm right on every account. Mm -hmm. I'm right. Yeah. I am absolutely right. You wanna know why I'm right? Because this is a, this is a successful show. Yes. So there's no denying that. What? Mm -hmm. Thank you, you all, for listening. What is today's date? Today's the 27th. Oh, we're in the 20s. Uh-oh. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is on her period or about to. Or oh! Like, yes, she is. Yeah. Yes, she is. Okay. She is such a woman. She's a woman. She's a woman. But I'm a right woman. Oops, shout out! Right angry. Shout out to my peer in the game, Miss Jones, who showed up at the Wendy Williams oh. experience comedy experience last night. Art, I was barely listening to the jokes. We're over there confetching about being women. See, that's messed up. Did you? I'm sorry. What you mean you sorry? I'm so, sorry. I saw my ass too. I, I saw you show your ass. Oh, Yo, Art turned around and pulled his pants down for every damn body. <laughs> I, rubbed, I rubbed the Wendy Williams t-shirt on my ass. He, he, took he, it. He, yeah, he rubbed a t-shirt on his behind and everything. Art was on fire last night. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but me and Miss Jones are over in the corner. We're talking about practically the same thing that I'm talking to you about, except it's totally unrelated to what I'm talking about right now. Always fight, fight, fight. I got to tell you something. Joyner and Stern and Harvey and Star, they don't go through half what it takes to get it on as a woman in this business. They don't go through half. It's tough. It's uphill battle for women. It's uphill battle for a woman unless you look like this. <laughs> yeah. In a lot of cases, I made my hand like the claw. It's too bad it's on TV. You can't say. You see, do they know what that is? Yeah, ugly. <laughs> Basically ugly. And I'm not saying that I'm a beauty queen. I see you looking. And it is what it is, by the way. But you're a MILF, though. Yeah, I'm a MILF. <laughs> 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 but the point is, is that you know, you know, you know, you understand. Yeah. It 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 helps. It helps when you're arguing and and whatnot. If you are, you know, or trying to make your point. If perhaps you are um, either very very uh, strong and stern, you know, uh, in your presence as a woman, right. you know, or you're, you're nothing that people are distracted by. You know, or a lesbian. Oh, I was going to say, but I didn't want to say. Not a lesbian, yes. And not a lipstick lesbian. I'm talking about one of them Rosie O'Donnell specials. Yes, yes. yes. You know what I'm saying? That's the only type of woman that men seem to really damn respect. It's like you can't embrace your sexuality and still be right. Yeah. Except today, I'm doing both. Uh oh. And it's the eve of my period. Oh! That's easy! It's windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been to my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Why can't you say? That's all, baby. That's all I'm asking you is why can't you say? The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, where the listening is fun and the winning is easy. You just won yourself one thousand dollars. That is so lovely. Thank all of you guys. Yeah, where are you calling from, baby? Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn. Well, this ought to make all the sick people feel better. <laughs> it makes me feel great. Yeah, damn them. I understand. I feel your pain. It's a one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee. Who knows? You could be our next winner. Absolutely. With one hundred seven point five WBLS. Oh, 
yeah. Shout out to the Molly Mall. Molly Mall on the beat. Yeah. Yeah. This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by MasterCard. Let me talk to you about L.A. weight loss. When guest jeans were first invented um, back in the 80s, I remember, I remember, um, okay, I was able to wear Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. They were always cut for a womanly body, but I wore um, a larger size. Uh, Calvin Klein jeans also. This is the first wave of designer jeans. Cacherelles, my legs were too big. Sassoon's, I was just too big all over. Guest jeans, absolutely not. I got on a pair of guest jeans today. And better late than never, but I do. Thank you, LA Weight Loss. That 17 pounds that I lost was so crucial. And I don't have that muffin of fat. I mean, you know, everybody, I guess, gets a little skin that spills over the stop, over the top. But it's, it's, it's not, you know, crazy. You know, I almost feel like I'm committing a crime by wearing the guest jeans. They, aren't they so junior high? I mean, of all the brands of, of um, you know, upscale jeans... You know what I'm saying? You got your blue cult jeans. You got you, 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 seven. You got the man seven of all a man of all con, whatever the hell. I'm all you got the seven jeans. You, you got all these designer jeans. Of all the designer jeans, guess is like so junior high to me. But I wasn't able to guess back when guess was invented. So I can guess now. So I feel like um I'm recapturing something that I couldn't do back then. And these are size 30s. These are size 30s. And I, you know, they, they're not tight. I'm working them. Yeah, sure. You know, maybe if I was, you know, when I was 18, if I was able to wear them, I wouldn't, you know, be wearing them now. Thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. I say all that to say because I lost 17 pounds on L.A. Weight Loss. You. And then you're like, where is she going with this? <laughs> it's a commercial, everybody, for L.A. Weight Loss. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Listen, you can lose weight, too. I lost 17 pounds. It took me about 10 weeks to do it. I know it was under it was under three months. How many months is three months? How many weeks? 12. It's 12 weeks. Yeah. It took me under, it took me under 12 weeks to lose the 17 pounds. And I kept it off for a year and a half, easily at this particular point. I'm not going back. I'm not gaining it back. In my mind right now, I'm so hungry. I'm trying to decide what to have for lunch. But you know what? Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be something that's going to be better for me than, than, you know, than maybe what I used to eat before LA Weight Loss. Find out what LA Weight Loss can do for you. Get yourself some guest jeans. You know what I'm saying? And drop it like it's hot. 1-800-448-TRIM. Thank you, LA Weight Loss. Um... Oh, I love how when we switch modes, then we switch the music, too. Okay. See, see this right here? Remember the girl in the furry bikini sliding down the pole? Yes, yes. <laughs> this video. That could be you. Woo! We did have a good time, though, last night at the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. I was having my drinks. And I looked up. And I see Miss Jones. And I was like... And not only did I see Miss Jones, but I saw Miss Jones by herself, which is like the best because then I can, you know, chat with my friend Tarsha and we can key key, yes. you know, as opposed to, you know, having to meet new people. And then we can't really key key to say, you know how you keep your guard up when, you know, you're around strangers and stuff or, you know what I mean? Like she came by herself. I thought that was so damn hot. And she sat down and we had drinks and we talked you know, just, you know, just catching up. That's why I wasn't paying attention to what the hell was going on. But when you pulled your pants down, I knew. I was like, oh, look at the good artist at it. <laughs> Too deep as a conversation, huh? Yeah, we were having a good time. But you know what? I think people like to see that. I acknowledged her on stage. And, I, you know, I, I, every once in a while I saw people looking over at us. You know, people like to put people at, at, at um, odds with each other and everything. And, uh, you know. Oh, not you. You raised everybody around here. Yeah, so I feel as though I don't have to be at odds yeah. with anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We had fun. And then I went home. I got in the telephone. I got on the telephone. I, you know, every uh, every Wednesday after the comedy, um, I have a standing phone date with my girlfriend Lisa Carnegie. So you know, I call her up, and you know, she she pulls me from the comedy club right into the uh, garage. 
Last night, though, I had a driver because, you know. You're fabulous. No, uh uh-uh, no, because I could live. And so, therefore, you know, and I was living a little too much. Yeah. You know, my celebratory drinks. Anyway, look, um, thank you, everybody, for coming out, though. We really did have a good time. Thank you, Capone. Thank you, Ken Black. Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you, Artie. Thank you, Ray. House of Plenty. Trev Hollywood found true love last yes, night. Yes, Trev Hollywood oh. made a love connection oh. with, uh, with our guest from the bonus hour. Her friends stood her up. So I invited her over to my area to sit down, you know? Mm-hmm. She wasn't sitting like with me and Miss Jones part, but, you know, she was in the area, you know? So Hollywood sees her. And, you know? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know? And he comes over. Next thing I see, they're having a great time. Wow. He went and bought her a plate from Ray. What? So it was like a date. He, he paid the money. He bought her a plate of food from, from the back. He spent money on her? Yeah, already. <laughs> He's in love. Oh. Man. I think. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> and he was working it. He's blushing. He's blushing. Yeah, there were a lot of different things to look at last night at the comedy club. Hard on everything. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Did you go home and think about her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just spit iced tea all over Steve Harvey's computer. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. What are you doing? I mean, did you think about her, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I'll tell you what. That means yes. Yes, yes, yes. No. He called her to make sure she got home okay, Wendy. He's a gentleman. No, he told me he would have driven her home. Yeah, I know, yeah. But he didn't realize that, you know, he was going to be meeting a spectacular woman earlier in the day, so he ended up taking... I think, are we blowing it for you? Are we talking too much about it? Yeah, yeah, way too much. (laughs) Yeah, but she's been here on the show. She already knows that we're a little over the top. I don't think she's going to hold that against you. She's just going to tell you, can you please not tell them, you know, if we go out on a date and stuff? Oh my god. (laughs) He's got a piece of paper holding it up. Like, that's going to stop us from talking. He's standing red. Well, congratulations on your new girlfriend. Yes, congratulations. Have you told your other girlfriends? (laughs) Now I'm making them look like a mess. (laughs) No, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Listen, everybody, Tuesday, November 15th, Budweiser and Bud Light present uh, One Night Stand. It's featuring Nelly and the St. Lunatics. It's at the Hard Rock Live. John Legend's coming in next hour, by the way. You can listen to WBLS to win a six-pack of tickets for this. Um, but don't forget, it's Nelly and the St. Lunatics at the Hard Rock. Oh. you got to be 21 years or older, and no purchase is necessary. You can go onto our website for more information at WBLS.com. We should probably continue with the break and, um, you know, get into more of the show. All righty, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience till 7 on 107.5 WBLS. It's one for the month. The queen of radio, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy Williams. All righty, everybody, what's going on? Okay, yesterday's people poll question was, is your cell phone your only line of communication? Like, you, you, do you also have a home line or whatever? 60% of you all said yes. Wow. Aren't, well, you're one of those people. Your cell phone, that's it. No, no, I have a home line. What? I've always had a home line, yeah, because, you know, yeah, I have a home line. I just give it to just, uh, like, five people only have it, though, for family. And- well, make it six. Oh. You can write it right here. <laughs> but I'm never home, so you, you would never catch me there anyway. So, I mean, that's why the cell phone is the, the, the best one for accessing me, you know. I primarily got it for, like, you know, for, like, inter- you know, internet connection and stuff like that, but <laughs> and family has it, too, but... You have, you have, you have the one that can reach he's me all the time. He's stuttering. I'm not stuttering. He's stuttering terribly. Look I know, at this. No, 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 I've been drinking. That's why. <laughs> she has the main one though, the one that you can reach me at all times. It's only eight o'clock in the morning, practically. Huh? You've been doing what? Drinking. <laughs> well, I had a little bit of rum and coke. <laughs> he presses the last track. Well, because your cat scan came out positive, you're gonna live. I'm celebrating. I'm in a celebratory mood. <laughs> what was the word? Celebratory mood. Have another drink. We're going to ask you. That's going to be your monitor. All right. Next hour, we're going to ask you to say that word, too. Let's see if you you can do it right. All right. Well, 60% of you uh, say your cell phone is your only line of communication. Today's uh, people poll question. (laughs) From the files of art. Through Through the files of Zoe. 
Yeah, it's not actually such an odd question, actually. And I'll answer before. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh. oh. Hi, Zoe. Oh. Did you make up this people poll question? Which was it? The one that says, do you like to watch people have sex? Oh. oh. <laughs> do you? Yes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> when I was a single woman, you know, uh -oh. you could come to my house and find a very, very high powered. As, as a matter of fact, I prided myself in the particular telescope that I had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Now we live in the suburbs, you know, everybody's, you know, and, you know, I'm not into that, but yes, yeah, yeah. So what do you say? You can go into the wendywilliamsexperience.com. I, I like it. And I like to imagine that I'm being watched. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Don't you want to know who's going to jail? Uh-oh. I mean, does it, does it really matter? Does it, does it really matter? I gotta calm down. Former hot boy member Turk is going to jail. Oh, gosh. Now you remember in, <laughs> in in August, everybody. First of all, do you remember the SWAT team shootout that he had in that apartment in Memphis, Tennessee? I talked about it here on the show. Okay, well this this ten years in prison that he's getting is a result of the shootout with the SWAT team. In August, he was actually convicted of being um, a felon, a drug addict, and a fugitive in possession with a handgun as it relates to the shootout that was back in January that left a SWAT team member seriously wounded. So he got a 10-year sentence. Um, that's the maximum that the judge could give, and so the judge gave the maximum. He also uh, charged Turk um, to pay a $200,000 fine. I don't know when he goes in. But uh, that's it. Ten years. <laughs> Rosa Parks funeral, everybody. I've got some of the details. Um, if you happen to be in the area. Her funeral services are going to be held um, next Wednesday in Detroit. Next Wednesday in Detroit. Gee, the body's going to sit around for a long time, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why would you press that? I pressed it by mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when did she pass away? She passed away three weeks ago. <laughs> Come on, three all right. Ago. No, no, no. Was it on Friday or was it? Days ago. Well, today is Thursday. I think it was what? Monday. Either, either mon Monday. 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 Mm -hmm. Monday yeah. And let's see. Yesterday was Wednesday, so that would be three days. Next Wednesday would be. Gee, gee ten whole days. Oh. <laughs> Talk about some old funk. I gotta tell you something. And that's the public viewing. That's next Wednesday. I don't believe it. it's it's going to be. Uh, wow, this sits around a long time. Anyway, listen. The Henry Ford Museum bought the 36 passenger bus from a Chicago auction house back in 2001. You know, that's the bus you know that she sat on, and they bought it for four hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars. After it had been sitting in a field for more than 30 years. The museum cleaned it up and just, it, it looks spectacular. The bus is restored. They used a $300,000 federal grant to do that. And on Tuesday, a 15-year-old museum visitor by the name of Megan. This was uh, two days ago. She went and sat in the same seat occupied by Rosa Parks. And this is what she said when she sat in that seat. It's overpowering. It feels like I was really 
there with her for a minute. I have to say it dramatic like because that's I'm sure how she felt. Well, they should have a have a last ride in that bus. Come on, oh, come oh. on, goose, come on, goose, come on. <laughs> prop her up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, I'm riding her Is that down. Goose? That's goose. He's supposed to be normal. No, but not, you know, but not proper, uh, but, it, you know. What? Have her laying down? Oh! <laughs> oh what the hell? Of course you prop her up. No, oh, just have the coffin in the, in the bus. What? Oh. <laughs> That's even worse. Goose. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rest in peace, Rosa Parks. We respect you and we love you. It's just our sick way of, of celebrating. Wendy, man. I am looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professionals. I'm I'm very interested in that. I'm very Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm having a problem with my fiance and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm -hmm. No, because I stick to the conversation. I stick to John Legend. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. It's advice hour time here on The Experience, but first I wanted to read to you um, a statement from Atlantic Records. But before I do that, <laughs> boy, that was quick. I want to uh, let you know that it comes from MTV that Missy Elliott has been dropped from her record label, Atlantic Records. She's had six albums under her belt with Atlantic, and despite her popularity and numerous awards, it goes on to say that Missy Elliott's record sales have never been through the roof. To combat this news from MTV, Atlantic Records has rushed over the following statement. There is absolutely no truth to the rumor that Missy Elliott has been dropped from Atlantic Records roster. She is an icon, a pioneer, an artist of extraordinary vision and immense talent. We have the greatest respect and love for Missy, and she remains a cornerstone of this company. Well, hell, Def Jam dropped Patti LaBelle, so stranger things have happened, mm. Atlantic Records. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I say that this story requires further investigation. Maybe Missy's driving around in one of her exotic cars right now listening to the show. Yes. Hey, Missy. Can you just call us and let us know whether you've been dropped or not from your record label? I promise I won't corner you about anything else. I'll wait for you to come in the studio about that. Thanks. So, as it goes every day at this time, can you take that in the other room? Because I need the telephones for its, advi its advice hour. Okay. All right, let's um, wait. put that phone on the hook. Put that phone on the hook, Goose, so that we can actually receive phone calls from the listeners. Oh, boy. Hi. Uh, welcome to the radio. It's Advice Hour. This is Wendy speaking. Hi. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. The radio's up. Yeah, no. Just turn the radio down and, okay. and away we go. <laughs> I have a question about my sexuality. Okay. I'm wondering if I'm curious or if I'm maybe bisexual. I'm not sure. Lately, I've been having these feelings about women. Hmm. And I'm very sexually active. I've never had a problem getting penis. Okay. But lately, I'm wondering if it's because I'm kind of disenchanted with males in general. Yeah. Like, I'm starting to hate them. It's And it has nothing probably to do with the sex. It's probably more about them just being disappointing creatures. Yeah. Like, mm. I, I, I don't want to be a woman that hates men. Yeah. But lately, I, have, I find myself looking at women and I almost want to ask one on a date or something but at the same time i don't really think i want to have sex with them or like am i just being confused should i go see a therapist 
to work through it? Well, as opposed to um, asking, in therapy, first of all, therapy is never a bad idea. Right, I, I've, I've been in therapy before. I'm well, like not, not, I don't have a touch of the crazy. Yeah, anything. well, how old are you? I'm 35. I say I'm 29, though. No, no, yes, you're, everybody has a showbiz age, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, you know... You're 35, so that's old enough to know what you want. Uh, you know, you're not some confused kid. Right. <sighs> Have you ever been with a woman? No, that's the other thing. And I, I mean, totally, I'm almost like, and some, peop some people would call me kind of a, uh, I'm a hottie. Yes. Like, I really love the penis. I'm a friend to the penis. I can look at penis. Okay, okay. Stop saying I can look at times. penis all day. All right. I understand. <laughs> No, they, you know, I would say go talk it out with a therapist. Okay. Because it doesn't sound to me like you're a lesbian. It sounds like, you know, you have maybe, uh, perhaps maybe some sexual fantasies about women, but they say that's not unusual. Right. To actually act on it, it, it you, it, listen, your disappointment with men probably has to do with why you know, you're attracted to women. Somehow you think the grass is going to be greener on the other side. I would go to therapy the and talk. Fur. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, do you really, is that what you really want? All no, that down there? No. I mean, mm. to, re to be honest, I fantasize about them doing me. Yes, oh. because nobody wants to, exactly. Because <laughs> you, you don't want to be on the giving yeah, like, end of that you know, mess. You know, you got one. You know what all goes on. Right, right. Yeah, you're a selfish lover. I am. <laughs> In your mind to another woman. Uh, yeah. Um, I, you know, I, some therapy. And, okay, now my therapist, I saw her years ago. I haven't seen her in a while. But I was just a little uh, angry, like, years ago. But I'm not angry anymore. Mm. I'm really, really kind of happy, mm -hmm. I, I, I think. And, you know, I had a lot of, uh, like, I lost my mother at an early age. You know, and I had to work through that. Yeah. So would I go back to her or would you go to, like, a sex therapist or just some other chick? I, you know, this is this is more than about sex. So, I, you know what? Go to her and see how you like the conversation. I mean, why not start, you know, start with her, and then if you don't like that, then then go to somebody else. Right, because we have kind of a history, even though it's been a few years, mm. but... The history's still there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I well, mean, and I masturbate, like, a lot. Oh, 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 I knew you'd love that. All right. All right, well, woman, good luck with um, therapy and working your way through. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Welcome to Advice Hour. Thank you. Wendy, yes. I, Ma, I don't need advice, but I have, well, kind of. I just need to get you, you to sign off on this. Okay. I was in a relationship for six years with this guy, mm -hmm. right? So, therefore, um, he gets, he cheats and gets someone's break, another girl pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, I bounce, mm -hmm. of course, but I still love him. How long has it been since you've broken up? About two years. Mm-hmm. About two years. Is he with he, Is he with her? He claimed he's not, but from the people in the circle that he hangs out with, I hear that he is on the low with her. You know. So then leave. Different. So then leave him alone. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? I mean, he's got he's got responsibilities with her. He cheated with he cheated on you and was sloppy. I mean, you know, got another woman very, pregnant. Very. Leave very. him. Leave him alone. Stop torturing yourself. Move on. Yeah. yeah. Move okay. on. Okay. All right. Thanks a Take lot. Take care. Bye bye. I mean, it's, it's, Hello? Ter it's terrible, uh, you know, that she still you loves hold. him. So she, No, you're not on hold. Hello? And that she still loves him, but she's got to break free. Hello? Yeah, Wendy? Hi. I sent you something yesterday uh, for Sharice and Lynn. A fax. Uh, do we have your, what's your fax? Do we have your fax number? Wait, 1866. 866, get Wendy. Fax, well, wait, 866, Wendy fax. Yeah, we sent, it was a, um, a what's the name we sent? Say bullfrogs and blowjobs. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Can I send it to you again? Sure you can. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. It's advice hour, you know. Yes, I do know. Hi, okay. Wendy. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, I have a situation. Okay. Okay. I'm 20 years old. I'm with child. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got pregnant um, during a one-night stand on my birthday in April. Wow. And um, it's kind of crazy because it was too late. I found out kind of late, too late for me to abort it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in a situation where my baby father is not going to take care of my child. I'm almost, what, seven, eight months pregnant. Wow. 
Okay, I met somebody in my fifth month of being pregnant, mm -hmm. and he wants to marry me. But does we he know that you're pregnant? That. Did he He's know that you're there for the entire pregnancy? And I don't know. My my father knows about him. His family's gotten really really close with me, you know. And my mom doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them, a lot of people don't know, but some people do. I don't know how to feel about it. Like, how to, how to feel know, about getting... Right, or I'm wrong for the situation because of how fast everything happened. Well, I, you know, marriage um, is going to change your whole life, and having the baby will change your whole life. I think I, that you should... You we need... know that it's not going to happen for another year. I'm, I'm actually, he's like, you know, he wants me to move with him now. He's actually, he lives out of town mm -hmm. as we speak, and mm -hmm. he's, he's further away. But he wants me to come live with him now. And I said, you know, I'd rather wait until my child is at least six months to a year so that my family could get attached to the child. You know, I won't be just jetting off. I think that's a better idea. I can't believe you're so sensible about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be. This is crazy. I'm 20. He's yeah, 26. You're only 20 so years he's old. He's like the perfect, 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 yeah, perfect yeah. A-plus guy. And I don't want to let him slip through my hands. But does, I know it's a sticky situation because does, of the does, way that my baby father is. Nobody I, knows. I was going to say, does, he is. does does your does this uh, the new man in your life know that he, you're pregnant from a one night stand? Yes, he does. He knows the situation. Wow. He rather me not even speak to my baby father. Right, gotcha. Um, I think that you're probably doing the right thing by waiting until the baby's like six months old. Give you six months into motherhood, and you know, let your family get to know the baby and whatnot. And you know, congratulations to you. There, there are not a whole lot of guys that come along when a woman is pregnant. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful. I thank God every single day. And that's how I know he has to be something special. I can't let him slip through my hands. I understand. So and I'm like, he asked me to marry him. You know, he's like, you know, I'm trying to struggle and get this together so that when the baby wow. is time for you to be here, you can come. And I'm like, you know, I'm ready. But I just need to know if I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And with the baby's father, I don't want to keep him from his child. But, you know, if he doesn't do what he has to do in the next couple of months, I'm out. Yeah. Point blank period. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I think you're doing the right thing about waiting to um, really settle down with the new man. And um, if he's for you, if you all are for each other, then he'll still be there. But right now, your main priority is, you know, finish just dating, have the baby, get used to being a mom, and, and, and you know, get yourself together. Right. Okay. Well, I wish Thank you well. Bye-bye. I appreciate it. Love yeah. you. Oh, love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, John Legend, everybody, next Hello. hour. Hello. Hi, is this Wendy? Yes, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. I love your show. I love, love, love your show. Thank you. I just you. want to make a, com a comment towards the girl that stated that she had, she was in a relationship for six years. Mm -hmm. That was me. I was in a relationship with a guy for seven years, and I just want to tell her that... If she's still listening, after five years extra, when I was with him, I decided to leave him. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's been nothing but positive impact towards me. Good. And just to let her know that, you know, she can do it. Even though she still love him, and I still feel the same for him, just keep it moving. Because Good. Because it's, it's the best thing to do. And I just want to tell you, I love, love your show. Well, thank you. And I love everything you do. Oh, well, well, thank you. All right. Take bye -bye. it easy. Bye-bye. How are you? How you doing? <laughs> Hello. Hi. You're on the radio. We only have two minutes. It's advice hour. Yes, Wendy? Yes. Hi. This is Tony. Hi, Tony. And I'm calling from Brooklyn. Uh-huh. I, I, just, I just recently went to Florida, right? Is and I was girl? hanging out with my friend DL. Is this her? And then when I came back, a friend of mine was, like, calling me all sorts of names, yeah. like whore and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And this friend... Um, you wouldn't normally think that he would do that because mm -hmm. me and him weren't seeing each other. And I just, I don't know if I should continue the relationship with him. Well, how long have you been with him? Um, I've been seeing him, but how, I, I, for I how, didn't, for how, like, how long? How long? About three years. Oh, okay. Well, after three years, if you, you, have you wanted to be his girlfriend all along? Um, you see, at the beginning, um, no, because I was too young, but now he, I could have, and I, and I, I could have. Who'd you go to Florida with? I went, I went by myself. You need to leave him alone. I mean, you know, you went to Florida by yourself. He's calling you a whore. Oh. You've been with him for three years. He's never given you the title of girlfriend. So, you know, leave him alone. Get help. Yeah, that too.
Thanks. It's windy, man. My boyfriend and I have been dating for like about four months now, and first time we had sex, he could not get it off at all. Maybe it's drinking. Is he a drug user? Does he take any depressants or anything? No, nothing. Maybe it's how you do. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, this your boy Lloyd. This is Tawanda Braxton. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. And right now you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yes. Artie, thank you so much for ordering me those shoes. What website did you go to get them? Uh, trannygear.com. Trannygear.com, everybody. Yes. If you go to that website, what you will find, <clears throat> for the trannies, you'll find a very extensive selection of shoes going all the way up. I believe, did I see size 14s and 15s on there? Yes. And I saw heels eight, from eight inches. eight inches heels for the real fetish in you. Um, for the regular uh, women who are looking for a larger size shoe, don't be scared by the name trannygear.com because on the website you'll find shoes that are actually sensible enough to wear to the wedding, to the boardroom, or um, to a gay party. Yes. I mean, you know, you get a plethora of all kind of shoes. Um, trannygear.com. Are you sure that's what it's called? It's trannygear.com. Trannygear.com. Yes. So go to that website as we chat. And a shout out to Jesse Vault, who, uh, that is actually Jesse Vault's website. Jesse, I saw your name on the website. Um, so shout out to you. You're doing a really good job at trannygear.com. One day I would like to have Jesse Vault in um, just to talk. About the bigness, mm. the grossiosity, the fabulosity, and the fabulosity. Fabulous yet gross to have a foot so big. All my shoes are size 12s. Some of them are the big tranny shoes, and some of them are the um, you know sensible ones. <laughs> but I ordered. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, I got a flair for the tranny. Anyway, everybody, um, oh, John Legend, by the way, uh, will be in the last hour of the show. Next hour, we actually have a psychic coming in. Don't you love that? We do that every once in a while here. Uh, all right, it's still advice hour. I'm about to go to the phone, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, Nicole Richie is planning on releasing a perfume. Um, she's currently checking out scents like lavender and ginger. Reportedly, she's looking to call her fragrance different. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello. Hi. It's Advice Hour. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hey, girl. I love you. Thank you. Yeah, Wendy. Yes. I have the biggest idea for er for all. I'm gonna make the radio station, two radio stations, nervous right now. Okay. And it's advice to them. If in the mornings when I come out to go to work, I feel like hating everybody, and I want to hear Star. I listen to him every morning in the afternoon. The only person I want to hear is Wendy. And I say, any radio station that gets Star and Wendy together on that radio station is going to be the whole thing. It's already been done in Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, it is. Oh, well, we need Sh it over here. Shout out to the Mighty Power 104.1. Oh, oh, yeah, we need it over here And right now. in Philadelphia, shout out to the Mighty Power 99. Yes. Yes, girl, we need it over here because, it, you know, that's the thing. Well. I'm telling you, you bring the heat. Start bring the hate. That's it. Don't you love that? Oh, I love that. All right. I well, totally well, love it. Listen, I got to go because it's advice hour. Okay, baby. Okay, Talk take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, that was a very nice uh, thought, though. Um, you're on the radio. Hey, Wendy. Hi. How can I help you? Hi. I'm calling because I need some advice. Okay. I'm in a really weird kind of situation. I've been with my boyfriend for about two years now, and we're engaged. Mm-hmm. And everything is going great, but um, my grandfather just recently passed away. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. And he left my grandmother behind down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm thinking of moving to Florida. And um, I really want to go because I really want to help my grandmother out and be there for her. Right. But my fiance is not trying to hear that. And I, I don't blame know him. what to do. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should just... I hate to be selfish, but yeah. you're the one in the spotlight of life right now. Your right. grandmother, and I respect my elders, so please, older people, don't take this the wrong way, but she's had her time. Right. Now, what you need to do is bring her up here 
set her up in something, not your house. Right. But, uh, you know, set her up someplace and live your life. Right. You are engaged. You're about to start your life. You're going to give it all up to take care of your grandmother in Florida. There's right. an easier way to do that. See, I don't blame your fiance for not going. Right. Um, it, you need, what, what, is, what is keeping you from even remotely thinking about bringing your grandmother up here? Well, my grandmother does not want to come up here. She hates Jersey. She, she, was, she doesn't have a she choice. She lives in New York. Well, she doesn't want to come. She does not want to come. Okay. Does your grandmother have to be taken care of, or are you just being a dutiful granddaughter? Uh, yeah, basically. I'm just. I just want to help her out because I kind of feel bad because she's all alone, and I just. I just figured I. She doesn't have to help her out by going there. I, I mean, I know how it is, you know, when, when older people are left, when a spouse passes away and stuff. She doesn't have friends down there? Um, Not really. Not really. She's an older woman and she kind how of old is, her How herself. old is she? She's 78. Okay. You might, you might want to think about setting her up then in a nice retirement community where she can be around like-minded people. Yeah. Who are not broken down, but, you know, have a zest, you know, 78 to new 58. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. how, yeah, old, exactly. how old are you? I'm 22. In the meantime, your life is ticking by. You're in your prime. You're going to leave everything and, and go to Florida. You're still young to consider getting married, by the way. But at the very least, I, I would not give up uh, my life to uh -huh. to a woman who she doesn't need your care. You're just being so damn dutiful and good for you. But at the end yeah. of the day, don't forget about your own life. Yeah. There's a way that you can handle this and still stay engaged. And oh, okay. still be a dutiful granddaughter. So, you know, your assignment is to think about um, how you can please everybody, most importantly, yourself. Right, okay? exactly. Oh, thank you so much, Wendy. Oh, you're very welcome. You take care. All right. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi. Hi. Okay, she's not there. Hey, listen, I'll just take a moment to um, then talk to you because we only have about a mo moment on the break. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Oh, hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just calling because I have a little question for you. Okay. Okay. I've been doing this guy for like almost a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I have two children and he has a daughter, but I haven't met his daughter yet. And for a year and a half? Yes. And how old are your kids? Um, Seven and three. And, and he's met them several times, I'm sure. Several times. And yes. now his daughter, though, is how old? She's around 12, 13. And, but he doesn't have custody. The daughter lives with the baby's mother, right? Yes, with the mother. Mm -hmm. and so I met his mother. I met his dad and brothers and sisters and even a few of his friends. Well, but I haven't met his daughter. And I'm like... At 12 or 13, mother? that's that age where you go back to your own mother and you say, Mom, Daddy got a new girlfriend and she's prettier than you. Or, you know, she's missing her teeth. Or she's got a fabulous job and I love her. And she bought me, you know, new jeans. and You know what I mean? Okay. So he's probably still weighing it out because the second the, the, the shoe drops that daddy's in love and the woman is fabulous, that's when the baby's mother drama relationship with he and this woman could possibly flare up. I mean, look, it, it is odd that you haven't met her, but this is a conversation you need to have with him, not me. Yeah, I've, I've spoken with him on several occasions about it. Mm, what does he say? Like he just nicks me off and want to talk about something else or want, you know, do other things. Okay. Like, I'm well, like, what's the problem? Okay. So what do you think I should do with You me? need to be more hard-nosed with him. Thank you. I have a girl, right, for 10 years. Like, half of it. I've been in jail like five or years. I come home recently, right, and I come to find out now she's dealing with women. I don't have no problem with that, you know what I mean? As long as you can be in on it. Yeah, yeah. The Wendy Williams... Yeah, y'all, what up, man? It's your boy Bow Wow, you know what I'm saying? Check this out. You guys are now listening to the queen of all media, man, right here, Wendy Williams. All right, does this look crazy art? No, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> We're having company come in. A psychic. I have to be reminded of his name and everything. I never wrote it down. Damn. Well, anyway, everybody, um, it's the Wendy Williams experience where the motto is, it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, that's, a, that's a nice quick thing to say to make an excuse for when things get messed up. Mm. It is what it is. You if you were expecting perfection, go elsewhere. Yes. It, it's not happening here. 
I don't even think we strive for it. Do we strive for it? No, we just try to be the best we can be. That, that's it. That's it. Go. We're good for us. Yeah. If we set the bar low, then, we, you know, we do well. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we compete with ourselves. Oh, here comes our psychic friend, okay? okay. All right, bring the psychic in. Yes, bring him in. What's his name? <laughs> is, that, is that his book? No. Okay. What's his name? Brother Jonathan. Jo huh? Brother Jonathan. Brother Jonathan. Jerome Carter. Oh, Jerome Carter. That's right. Yeah, Jerome, we, we talked know, years ago. So people. You sent your book and everything else. Nice to see you again, Jerome. You, you, look, you look better. I look old. You look Thank you. Good. Have a seat. What is that, a brooch? No, it's an amethyst. It was made by me. It's symbolic of the Ten Commandments. Oh, okay. If you look at the popes, all the popes and the bishops in the Catholic Church, they have an amethyst on their left hand. It has yes. titanium in it, which is using alloy space rockets, which puts out a vibration. The last time you were here, you dropped some um, bomb-worthy information regarding your your feelings about Whitney Houston and her aura. And, Ooh, you remember and, that. Yes, we, we did. We see within two months, there would be death around her. Yeah. And then two months later, her unfortunate her, father Her father died. passed away. But she did say that... Uh, he would die before she gave me the money because he was suing her. I know. I recall. I recall. Good to see you. You look great. Thank you. This is such an honor. He you doesn't have any headphones. Why doesn't he have headphones? Why doesn't he have headphones? Immediately he needs headphones because we're going to go to the telephone, Jerome. You're going to okay. help us out with um, you know, some of the listeners. Okay. Uh, and now what do you need? First of all, you've got a book. No, no, no. I don't have a book. I'm working on this. There's some very good people listening to your show right now. a and &E. I'd like to say hello to Phil Berger mm -hmm. of Kingfish uh, Productions. They okay. produce 80% of the shows for E. Well, what are, they, what are they about to try to give you a, a psychic show? Well, it's kind of a reality show. Oh. He spent a breakfast with me one morning, and we talked, and he saw how the waitress reacted to what I was doing, and we oh. walked down the street, and how people react to me just stopping and talking. Yes. And it's been discussed for a few months, so finally the big meeting is tomorrow morning, and thank you for allowing me to be here. Oh, okay. He just helped me. Oh, what am I? I'm part of the pitch. Lady, you are the pitch. Oh, well, maybe I'll get a show <laughs> out of pitch. it. We said pitch. We said pitch. We said pitch. Here, put, put, your, put your headphones on because we're going to go to the telephone. What do you need from the listeners? I just need push the first them down. Let them, let them fit you. Uh, what do you need from them? Just their first name. That's their, it? And their month and date of birth. Oh. Month and date of birth is very important because your name is very important. As the Bible says, a good name is rather to be chosen than riches of gold. Okay. There's no accident when we have the name we have. So by taking your name, we tap into your vibration. Mm. Like when Kmart became B Kmart, when Pop Day became P Diddy, and P Diddy Diddy, all these numbers changed. Mm. See, P Diddy was about to go to jail. P Diddy had a bad relationship. Puff Daddy ran marathons. Oh. Puff Daddy didn't get in trouble. Now he's going to Diddy, which equals movies. Watch it next year. It'll be all about movies. Well, oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say, well, he just changed his name, but you're right. He changed it, I think, that to was for Diddy, right? Reason. All right, well, let's go to the phone. Hello, hi, you're on the air. Jerome is here, Wendy's here, and all you got to do is give your name yeah, and your date fun. of birth. Now, if you don't want to know, don't ask, okay? Mm -hmm. Hello? Okay, hi. hang up. We'll go to the next person. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand what the delay is when we say hello. Hello, <laughs> hi, you're on the air. Hi, hi, Wendy. Hi, Jerome's here, too. Hi, Jerome. Hi, what's your first name, please? First name is Kim. Kim, and your month and date of birth, please? February 28, 1974. Do you have a question? Uh, I want to know about my life. Oh, be more specific, please, Kim. Okay, um... Where am I going now? Well, like, things are better this year. Things are much better this year. Last year was a year from hell. Your yes, last year was a year where you learned a lot of lessons. See, you have a tendency to, uh, you have a problem eliminating things and people that are no longer necessary for your growth. So last year, situations were created in your life. They appear to be chaotic. They appear to be problematic. The guy with the D, first or last name beginning with the letter D. Who is he? The first or last name? First or last. Who's the guy in your life with the D? That caused all the problems. Uh, his name is Ronald Borden. Okay. Is it the, mm. Doesn't start with a D. No, there's a D. Anyway, there's something about someone that did something with you, some money. First to last name begins with the letter D, and this was last year. And it's the same gentleman that five years ago, five years ago you moved, correct? Yes. Five years ago there was a move or a change, and there was a man from your past who tried to come back in your life five years ago, but it didn't work, correct? Yeah. That's the D. Oh, God. <laughs> no, Jerome Carter, same initials, but different people. Thank All right. You Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, hello. Hi, you're on the radio with Jerome Carter. <laughs> I love watching Wendy's reactions. Because, you know what, I, we just need, like, specific questions from people as opposed to tell me about my life, mm, you know? Okay, what part of my life? My love life, my financial life, exactly. my spiritual life. Exactly. Hello? Ooh, I love this show. Hello? Hi. I'm waiting to speak to you. Yes. Jerome's here. Yes. Hi, what's your first name, please? My name is Robin. Robin, and your month and date of birth? 10-1962. And your question, please. God, you're one of the most stubborn people in the world. Oh, me? No, you. 
Your, um, your favorite words are I, me, and mine. There's usually only one good opinion at a time, yours. <laughs> no, 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 only because you're born to be a leader. You don't like being second to anyone, do you? No. And that's why women don't like you. You don't get along with women very well. I get along great with everyone. Okay. All right, dude, what's your question? Okay. <laughs> My love life. <laughs> yeah, right. You get along great with everyone except your man. <laughs> what about your love life? Let's be more specific. Um, what you relationship. Lady, you don't have a relationship. You're involved in what we call a situation. Oh. I can't call a relationship something that has three sides. Mm. And you are aware of this. Three uh, sides? Three sides. There's three elements. If you call this a relationship, there's another woman. You are aware of this, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, you don't have a relationship. Call me later. Ten. Sure. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> well, I can't believe she said, uh-huh. Oh, God. Hello. <laughs> hey, Wendy. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Jerome is here. <laughs> Hi, Jerome. Hi. I'm happy to be here. This is great. Now, give your name. What's your first name? My please? name is Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Oh, okay. Joanne. Good. You, you you got some type of substance about you. And your birthday. Your seven birth seven eighty one. Okay. What's wrong? What's your question? Um. Well, I'm actually. You're gaining weight. You're gaining weight. You're gaining weight. Something wow. About, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Uh. Something wow. about moderation right now. You need to work on moderation. Did you get rid of that guy from three years ago? That guy sucked. Are you still with him? The guy from three years. Yeah. Ago? Let's go back three years ago. Are you still with him? Please say no. No. Good. You're not stuck on stupid. <laughs> What's your question? No, because I'm engaged right now, so I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk what's, to what's, what's his birthday? Now, it's very interesting. Orthodox Jews have the lowest rate of divorce of any ethnic group on the planet. Before yeah. they get married, they do the numbers on each other. My father's oh. a black Ethiopian Jew. This is how I oh. learned numerology. I just turned 50 four days ago. I've never been married because I never met anyone numbers who match mine. Oh. 87 to 93 percent of divorce attorneys are Jewish. Oh. So by the first name and the birth date of this man she wants to marry, I can tell you right now whether it's going to work or not. Yeah, give it up. It's 214, <laughs> no, 213.77. Okay, is it 214 or 213. Which man do you have? 213. 213. Okay, what's his first name? His name is Carlos. Okay, he's got some legal problems right now. He's something about the courts. Judge, what is this? Yeah, he is in court, actually. Oh, okay, he's got some legal problems. And uh, were you with him four years ago when he was in more problems? No. Four years ago, he couldn't even pay attention, let alone his bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, he has another baby, a little boy by another girl. Who is this? Well, he has a daughter. Oh, uh, okay. If you... Okay. Well, I if guess you... he has a son and a daughter. Oh, crap! Oh. What? Oh, he's got uh, a son someplace, according to Jerome. Now, he's a nice man. The only problem, he's, he's a pathological liar. You know oh, where this, right? Oh, he's a pathological liar? Yes, stop repeating yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. a, if you can stick with him like you've done, because you put a lot of energy behind your man. But remember this, if you marry him, you're marrying into something called the Adams family. The you, Adams family. Yeah, you have met his family, right? Yeah, I met his family. Yeah, the fruit doesn't fall for Well, yeah. let's get back to the son. Does she need to investigate about this son? Well, it's the woman, first to last name, beginning with the letter M. Who's the woman that he knows with the M? I don't know. That mm. might be the baby's mother of the son oh. that you don't know about. Well, I'm not going to put anything out, but okay. what I'm saying is there's some elements that she's aware of that she's in denial of. Oh. Okay. Your fiancé thinks that Fidelity is an insurance company. Okay. Wh which it is. All right. But, but he does love you, though. He does. For what he knows of love. But there's no romance. There's no magic in your relationship. So why are you going to get married? There's no romance. There's no magic now. You think it's going to come after you get married? Mm. Okay. Thank All you right, for thank calling. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. Um, Jerome from the fax machine this time. Ooh. Uh, my birthday is 2-1. My wife's... Well, excuse me. My name is Renee, and I want to know about my career. Excuse me, 12-1. 12-1. Well, that makes a big difference. You can't yeah. get 9 one one down and 4 one one Yes. Uh, she wants to know about a career and her birthday is 12-1. Yes. And the first name is? Renee. Okay, she's trying to make a lot of decisions right now. Something about school, something about education, something about some classes or courses that she should be taking. She should not make any impulsive decisions. She's born on the, what's the birthday again? 12-1. One. So she was born to be a leader. If she's standing in line, would you want to be number one? If you're in someone's life, would you want to be number one? If you're in a competition, would you want to be number one? Okay. People born the first to tenth, one in zero equals one. The nineteenth, one in nine equals ten, one in zero equals one. Or the twenty-eighth, two in eight equals ten, one in zero equals one. Are born to be leaders. Her problem is she's being second place. She could step up a little bit. So she take needs, take your career in your own hands and yes, step and go it up for a bit. It. Get a new hairdo too. Oh. <laughs> I wish she could be on the line. I love the reaction. <laughs> All right, now let's Wendy, go. what's your birthday? I don't, I don't know the year. No, because uh, your aura is gold, gold, gold. Very few people have a gold aura. Gold is a very strong element. Like my man over here, his aura is green. He's going through a, a healing or something right now. What's your name again, sir? Goose. 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 You're going through some type of healing. Green is the color of growth, of abundance. Something's healing your in your body. My man over there. For the flu. I just got out the flu. Okay, so you're going oh, through a perfect. healing. Perfect, right, Goose? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, don't talk to me. Yeah, like, art, 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 doesn't, art, art gets nervous about that. But, but I, I, I got to respect that because I should never tap into anyone's energy. But I'm 718. If they don't want it for free. FYI. <laughs> I'm 718. 718. Okay. That's the most sacred number in the Hebrew tradition. 18. Uh -huh. In the Bible, when Sarah became Sarah, when Abram became Abraham, God added the eight, which is the Hebrew letter high. It means life and fertility. It equals 18. The way Kmart became big Kmart. B equals 2, I equals 9, G equals 7, equals 18. If a company has life and fertility, uh -huh. it has people coming to it. If a company has fertility, it's making money. That's how it became Big Kmart. 1 in 8 equals 9, which is the number of power. Career, career. Power, perfection, completion. You uh -huh. have the same gift I have, but you think it's common sense. Wendy, you have the ability to speak on subjects which you have no formal knowledge of. You do. Information just comes to you. You belong around rich, successful, well-to-do, prominent, upward striving, motivating, courageous people. You are on top of the mountain, but stop leaning down in the valley. When you pull people up, when they do it with one hand, not both. Oh, my gosh. You are so uh, right on. I'm always trying to re-damn-habilitate. <laughs> bring people re along. I love that word. Re-damn-habilitate. No, you, I, absolutely, I do. <laughs> I, I love to be able to, you know, you know. But the Bible says, cast not your, your pearls before swine. We try to help people, but you have a tendency to try to help people who have no intentions of making themselves better. That's right. I lead to water. They never damn drink. They never drink. It make me look like an ass. Because you know, no, you never look like an ass. That's for sure. But go where you're appreciated, not where you're tolerated. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Alicia. And her birthday is 1125. She wants to know about her love life and her career. Well, what a fabulous person. She's born 1125. 2 and 5 equals 7. She's born the two powerful numbers, 711. Okay. Which equals 18. Okay. That's why, the store, the, that's why the store is called 711. A good name is rather to be oh, chosen. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow. The best thing I can tell you, young lady, you have some artistic ability. And you're also uh, Sagittarius with a little bit of Scorpio. I see two of the people around you as four siblings. I can't get feedback, so I'm trying to do something that the whole audience. She's born on the 25th, 2 and 5 equals 7. 7 is the most sacred number in the world. God rested on seven days, seven days of the week, seven musical notes, seven colors in the rainbow, seven organs in the body. The reason we're having so much water, because we're in the year 2005, 2005 equals 7. That's why I sold my house in Miami and my house in Cancun just got destroyed. That's why I live in Arizona. Anything surrounding water, seven. Okay, how is her love life going to be? Uh, I don't mean to sound strange or anything, but if she ever learns to have an orgasm and relax... Oh! oh. Damn! Did I do something wrong? Uh, no! No, somebody else is, though. Yeah! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Thanks, Jerome! Michelle? Yeah? You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. Don't call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> You're calling number 10. No. <laughs> no. Yes, you are, my friend. Yeah, yeah. You just picked up a thousand dollars. Girl, I'm spinning. Who knows? <laughs> you could be our next winner. Where do you listen to BLS? I listen to BLS at home and at work. Let everybody know the only radio station in New York with the one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee. One hundred seven point five WBLS. BLS. One hundred seven point five. Shout out to Cinnamon Jones. Cinnamon, thank you so much. You know what? Amarosa looks just like Billy Ocean. You are right about that. <laughs> and check this out. I got a lookalike for you all. Dame Dash and Jermaine Dupree look like big little twins. <laughs> Yo, Dame Dash, is the more you stare at him, the more it's just like, ugh. And Jermaine, thankfully, you know, has a, a, a decent personality and stuff, but he's no looker. And Dame, you being an ass on top of being, ugh, just, and and you stop looking at the radio, okay? We've already discussed me. We're off that and on to other people. Damn. But I'll be damned. Look at this uh, side by side. Billy Ocean and Amorosa. They look like long lost twins. Look. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Can I ask you a question behind the scenes real quick? Okay, uh, turn off the mics.
All right, everybody. Anyway, um, we're still rolling through the hour of truth here on BLS. Excuse me. Pardon me for that one. This weekend, Akia is celebrating their 20th birthday. Akia's been around for 20 years? That must have been in Switzerland for the first 10, right? I swear, I just remember Akia's popping up uh, the other day. Exactly. Anyway, they're celebrating their 20th birthday with a 15% off on all home furnishings. And you can have yourself a put-together party and put it together. Don't miss the party. Bob Lee is going to be there. The BLS Street Team, 4 p.m. at Akia. The one that he's going to be at um, actually on Friday at 4 p.m. is the Akia in Elizabeth. That's at 1000 Akia Drive. We love Akia. For more information about this or anything else, you can um, log on to WBLS.com. But I can tell you that Bob's going to have your chance to win an Akia gift card while supplies last. Okay? Okay, good. Also, WBLS is one of the proud sponsors of TV 411. Um, it's your chance to improve your reading skills and your writing and your math skills by watching TV 411. It's Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. Um, don't forget 525 today, your chance to dip into our $107,000 cash guarantee. We got $1,000 for you. So make sure that you're listening next hour, okay? When you hear the Steve Harvey cue to call in and win, that's when you call in and win. <laughs> um, LA Weight Loss, 1-800-448-TRIM, 1-800-448-TRIM. I love LA Weight Loss because LA Weight Loss helped me lose 17 pounds and I've kept it off for a year and a half. I love, I love the fact that I lost the 17 pounds because um, my legs don't rub together as much as they used to. Oh. I mean, you know, there's still a little action. As a matter of fact, you look almost freakish when your legs make no contact with each other. You know, uh, skeletal. You don't want that. That is not sexy. And not to mention you look like a dirty, trampy whore <laughs> because it looks like somebody's been digging you out all night. Oh! You know, which on one hand is, is very attractive, I guess, in some. But on another hand, you know, you got that skeletal look. Your legs have no, you know, friction with each other. And you look like you, you know what I mean? You don't want that look. So you don't want to lose too much weight. But have you thought about 25, 30, 50, 100 pounds? Do you need to lose some weight? Listen, we don't want you too thin, but we want you healthy. Call LA Weight Loss and find out what they can do for you. And have I mentioned they're affordable? Okay, well, they are. 1 800 448 TRIM. It's 1 800 448 TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss. Are, are you going to be uh, in Newark tonight? Yes, I am. Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'll be there next Thursday, but it's still going on tonight, though. What's it called? Dark Shadow? Dark Shadow, yes. All right. Every, every Thursday, but I'll be there next Thursday. Okay. Yes. So don't look for you tonight. Tonight you'll be home watching Everybody Loves Chris. There you go. Okay. You go. Okay. But you'll be there next Thursday. Next Thursday, yes. yes. But everybody else could be there tonight. Yes. Having fun. Yes. Yeah, fun. I'm going to Philly tomorrow to see Jay-Z and friends. And then I'm coming back to the city. I'm going to be hosting a party at Amarosa. Um, I was going to say Amarosa. Amazura. And, um... Yeah. That's October 28th you'll be there. That's... Tomorrow. Yes. Today's the 27th. Yes. Oh, boy. Goose, you going to be anywhere? You up to anything? No. You're going to be in your house on the couch? There you go. Bossing your wife around? <laughs> Playing on the computer. <laughs> While she does everything else. Yep. Mm -hmm. Goosey. Goosey. And Goose is so busy on the computer keys, he doesn't even see her. Can't hear nothing. Can't How long you been married? A bit. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Asking too much, okay? All right. <laughs> Woo! John Legend's going to be in um, next hour, everybody. I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, let's um, continue with the break. We'll come back with some great music for you. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on WBLS with today's R&B and Classic Soul. Don't come around here with that Wendy Williams. Get your facts straight or shut Experience. <laughs> Man, no matter the mood, one of them Artie remixes. It's always right on time. So, it's the Wendy Williams experience. And this person, Erica. Hey, Erica says, who is this character, Jerome? He's so rude. 
even if he is legit, I wouldn't listen to a word he says. Well, he, you know what? He talks fast. He, he, I think that when the psychics, when they, when they do the numbers and all that other kind of stuff, is that Tommy Davidson? I mean, excuse me, is that David Allen Greer? Open the door. Yeah, David. Hey. David, I'm ready, darling. Huh? Why are you crying? Hey, I know my breath smells uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, but no, I just no. Your breath always smells like what you just got to eat. But you know what? Can I get the other side? Hi. You know, Drew, hey. the one and only Drew Frazier. Hey, okay. Drew. How are you? Drew, I just saw something with you on it. Yeah. Well, there it is right there. Yeah. Is this the best? All right, you know? the comedians are in the house. Jerome is in the... Oh, Tommy, what kind of... I mean, excuse me, David. Why do I have Tommy Davidson on the brain? I don't know. Well, I do not know. He hasn't even visited here in so long. Well, However, you were just here two weeks ago. I was. And what time... What a time we had. Yeah, how did this show go? Uh, Well, we didn't do it yet. What are you talking about? No, you were here about... You were promoting something. I was. It was. It was wonderful. But it was missing one thing. Wendy. <laughs> Wendy and and Drew, we just see, we see each other from time to time. Because you come to the comedy yeah. experience. Yeah, I come down and Mama got to check you. Now I see that you guys are on the same comedy bill. You're in New York. You're telling jokes at... Help in me read Brooklyn, this. In Brooklyn. In, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, have, Brooklyn have, tonight at the Linden Multiplex Movie Theater. Four-year anniversary. It's going to be off the meat rack. 7.30 show and a 9.30 show. Starring the one and only Mr. David Allen Greer. First time in Brooklyn. Clad down! Coming to Brooklyn. Do you do the uh, Burroughs, Outer Burroughs? Do you, honey? Dip? Yes, I do. Are you just mad at No, I, I do the Burroughs. Okay. Why just came out your mouth kind of crooked? Bow. No, no, because I figured your next question you was going to be, am I coming out tonight? Why are you and it's because it's Thursday and I have I to go know. home. I hear you. I Tomorrow's hear you. Friday. I have to prepare. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What you doing this weekend? Well, the usual stuff. I hear you. you know, targets, cooking, and everything. Windy time. Do you, ever, you really go to Target, do you? Oh, yes. Do your fans approach you? Yes. Oh, yes. Do they? Sure. Do you say kiss the ring and keep tipping? No. <laughs> my people want a hug, too. They don't want to. They don't want just any Isn't kind of hug. Isn't that the truth? They, you, well, you give them a hug. It's like, well, what kind of hug was that? Do you hug? Well, you know, sometimes I do. Be sometimes honest. I what do you feel when people ask for a hug? I feel put upon, you know? It's like a handshake's not good enough. And like I told you, it's not just a hug. You give a hug, and it's like, well, that, you, you put your shoulder all in my chest. I want a hug. Give me a hug. Now, can I have a hug and a kiss? Now, Say something funny. Now, cause do we, a video. I've, do a joke. I've it's talked with the listeners about hugs before also, and my feeling mm. about hugs is um, the times in which we live, you don't know who's, who's doing the hugging. And all it takes is that one nod. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Have you ever been killed by a hug, Wendy? Uh, I don't know. Is the bird flu transacted by a Let hug? me tell you something right now. Give me a hug right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here's that knife. Oh! 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 She got knife technique. Oh! 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 I can't let go! Oh, my God. Do you understand? Mm. Now, maybe Man, you don't I think of that being a Tommy you. Davidson. Oh, Excuse you know me, what? being a Tommy Davidson. You know what? Why do I have Tommy? I'm sorry. That's Something very insulting. Something must have happened to you guys. What that's very you? insulting. Um, All right. Know, but you know what, Wendy? I still love you. But I like your technique. You are stabbing hard and fast. <laughs> yes. Let me you tell you something. Enjoy, have you been enjoying No, it? but David, it's it's difficult because mm -hmm. you never know where right. that's going to come from. You, yeah, don't, you don't know if it's friend or foe. You don't. You don't know. Drew? And I'm not even that famous, and I'm still getting But you tell jokes about all kinds of people. Yeah, so you don't know if that person one is joke mad too many because you know you talked about they mm -hmm. shoot. If you in prison, week. you ain't you ain't doing no hugs. Yeah, you? No, you're like, <laughs> no, I don't know. We don't see prisoners like, hey dog, give me a hug, man. Now, Black like D, give me a hug. Mm -mm. Now I know in radio right now, yes. you know um, they're doing the upfronts. Now in TV, when are the upfronts done? That's when they're pitching new stuff. Usually the upfronts are in May. Okay. So oh, you got a question? No, yes, because I was going to ask either of you guys, either Drew or you, David, yes. were you are you being pitched for anything? We talked about this the last time you were here. <laughs> well, Wendy, we moved on from being pitched. You're, you're, <laughs> I've been caught. To actually, yeah. to some of the comedy we're going to be doing tonight, you said pitched, I said caught. You oh, know? I get it. How you doing? You know, I, I get said, it. Hey, I look get out! It. I you get know, it. Because you said pitched, yeah, you know, I mean, I got caught. You know, instead of being pitched. And stuff. Okay. <laughs> hey, Brooklyn. This is a good. This is a good lineup tonight. Yes, I have a show. I know AG White. He's a, wonderful. Uh, syndicated talk show, late night with comedy. Not just you know, hey, what you doing? We're gonna do a lot of sketches, a lot of this and that on the Black People's Network. 
on BET. Well, blacker than that, because BET has been sold to Bobo. Oh, what's that? Radio? We're doing uh, UPN. Uh, we're oh. doing all that yeah. stuff. Yes, yes. Oh. In the spring. Oh, hopefully, Leroux. hopefully we're going to do it out of New York City, because I get so much love here. Look at you. Love the people. It's just a little something I'm doing national. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Wendy, what you doing? You doing your uh, what? I, no, I want I'm, you to come on my show. I do, because we have such chemistry. Did you tell your husband about me? Because I want to make every, sure everything's cool with him. Cause, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I don't, I don't want to get him upset. Did you and want? I have my show, which I'm oh, pitching oh, for oh. Comedy Central, which okay, is going to be crazy. Okay. It's called it's Nothing gonna But It's going to be Drew. bananas, believe me. Is it called Nothing But Drew? It's called Drew Through and Through. It's called That's Drew for you. That ain't the name of it, but oh, okay. definitely look out for it. It's coming, Wendy. You know what I'm saying? And when I do the launch, I'm going to do it right at, right at your joint. But tonight, it's, it's all about well. tonight. It's I wish you well tonight. with that. Why are yeah. you scratching your forehead? Because it has not moved since I got in here. I got the Botox. That, uh, I'm fresh. Like two weeks off. Two shows tonight, yeah. 739. There you go. Beautiful. Minutes, and it's going to be at the Linden Multiplex, is it? Absolutely. I can't wait. The Linden Multiplex Movie Theater on Linden Boulevard tonight, 730 and 930. It's Where the people crazy. go. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk to the people of Brooklyn. This is what was surprising to me. Not mm. you, Drew. No. But to you, uh, you know, is that you're going actually to the Barrows. Absolutely. A lot of people come to town. They, mm-hmm. Are you friends with Jimmy J.J. Walker? Never heard of him. Oh. Oh. oh! Jimmy who? Was he, did what, did he, did he perform with Slappy White? No, um, <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Wow. Stiney, wow. Stiney, I don't, never heard wow. of him. Jimmy. Wow. wow. Jimmy J.J., have you heard of him? Jimmy J.J. Walker, I have not. Kid Dynamite! Jeez, Kid Chocolate, I heard of. Oh. Kid Chocolate, I heard of. Wow. Mm-hmm. Kid Capri? I heard of Kid Capri. Wow. Man. Hey, I was going to gossip about Kid Capri, too, later on oh, in the really? show. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. saved my life, man. Yeah, really? Kid Capri saved my life in Miami Beach. They had the Super Bowl going on. Uh-huh. And I was trying to walk back to my hotel, man. It was like 5 in the morning. Uh-huh. Could not find it. A bus came out of nowhere. It's Capri's, but... <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yes, yes. I was like, Kid Capri! Yes. Kid, give me a ride home! Yes. He stopped. It was beautiful. Wow. He saved so thank you, Kid Capri! All right. Keeping it live. Keeping it live. All right. So, check it out, everybody. Brooklyn, there's two shows Seven going days. down Seven. at the Linden Multiplex. Absolutely. David Allen Greer, the fabulous yes. Drew Frazier. Yeah. In the building. Thank mm. you for coming back. Huh? Always. And you know, Wendy, I love you so much. Thank you. I wanted to be here with the new Wendy, Wendy man. I, got I have a place friend, and I've been with him for maybe a little over three years. And he's just now telling me that he has a child out there somewhere that may be like five or six years old. The Wendy Williams Experience. Here's what's happening from 107.5 WBLS, home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and the $107,000 cash guarantee. Join WBLS at the Shadows Free all night Thursday. It's truly jam-packed like Mr. Magic Friday and Chuck Chill Out Saturday at the Shadow. That new Mr. Magic Free Friday at the Shadow is elbow to elbow. You need to see it to believe. Plus, the Shadows' world-famous Halloween ball happens this Saturday with over a grand in cash prizes. And join Melissa Morgan as she performs all her huge hits live at the Shadow next Friday night. Stanford, Connecticut, join WBLS's Bob Lee this Saturday for the WBLS live broadcast at Cafe Bahia, 320 Greenwich Ave, Connecticut's true adult nightclub. Listen to WBLS to win six packs of tickets as Budweiser and Bud Light bring you One Night Stand featuring Nelly and the St. Lunatics Tuesday, November 15th at Hard Rock Live. Must be 21 or older, no purchase necessary. This club calendar is brought to you by RK Limousine. Call RK for all your transportation needs. 1 827 Limo. For more information, log on to WBLS.com. Tuesday. Get ready to throw down because BET's turning 25. Get ready. And we're ready to get the party started with superstars, legendary icons, and live performances that only BET can pull off. Special appearances by some of your favorite names in entertainment. Alicia Keys, Usher, Mary J. Blige, Yolanda Adams, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Donnie McClurkin, Steve Harvey, R. Kelly, Ronald Isley, Common, Kirk Franklin, LL Cool J, Arsenio Hall, Shirley Caesar, and more. It's jam packed with surprise appearances, special guests, and old favorites like the ultra talented and also smooth original VJ Donnie Simpson Donnie Simpson you believe it when you hear it no one ever puts it down like this what shizzle join BET in our prime and sexier than ever don't miss the party 25 strong the BET silver anniversary celebration Tuesday at 9 only on BET you heard about it five cities over 5,000 faces find out who the top 10 BET new faces are Saturday night at 9 only on BET No, never mind. 
you know what? Uh, yes, yes, please do. Thank you. All right, everybody. It's 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. It's always fun seeing David Allen Greer. How insulting that I called him Tommy Davidson. And he's such a good sport. Hopefully he likes Tommy. You know, I didn't even want to fish after that. Why am I thinking about Tommy Davidson? He must be talking about me because my neck hurts. Uh-oh. You know what I mean? David's a lot of fun, though. Yes. He's talented. I mean, the thing about him is that he's got a, a huge... Have you ever seen his resume? Like, if you ever Google his name, he's been in a lot of different stuff. A lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Including a lot of sitcoms and whatnot. Including his own. Yes. David Allen Greer show. And I like Drew. Drew is very funny. Drew is one of those comedians, Drew Frazier, you know, from New York, born and raised. You know, much like Capone, um, Talon, Talent. You know, there's so many of them right here in New York who um, are supposed to be the next big thing. I mean, it's only right. You know, they're, they're supposed to be the next big thing with the sitcoms and stuff like that. And shout out to Kevin Hart. And, you know, I like you. But where did he come from? Just out of nowhere, he came. And, he, and then he, he went. I feel like, you know, if they pass the if they pass the torch off to somebody who can really, like, just, you know, do the damn thing. Hold it down. So, you know, good luck to you, Drew. I wish you, I wish you luck. And don't forget those guys are going to be over at the um, Linden Multiplex in, in Brooklyn mm, tonight with two shows. Yes. That's good. A 7.30 and a 9.30. That's on Linden Boulevard. Yep, shout out to all my friends over in... Um, Queens at Hillside Honda. Hi, Joe. I see you. Uh-oh. Black Friday's a coming. And that's when I'll be over there. Ooh. We're not working Black Friday, by the way. Oh, no. Yeah, wow. no, no, no. The day after Thanksgiving now. So I can go over Hillside over there, too, Hillside Honda. Well, you can go wherever. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, don't try to clock my moves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, Black Friday's a shopping day. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Stanford, Connecticut, the weekends are meant for partying. Bob Lee is a party master. Uh-oh. He's got a trick hip and works it out on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy to say that, doesn't it? <sighs> All right, so he'll be over at um, Cafe Bahia, actually, in Stanford, Connecticut, 320 Greenwich Avenue in Connecticut. It's an adult nightclub. It's truly happening every Saturday night. And Bob Lee is going to be hosting the live broadcast on Saturday. Okay, so we need to continue on. John Legend, don't forget, is in next hour. He is our special guest. He's going to be at the Apollo Theater tonight. And he'll be in here to talk about it. Fred- oh. What's up? This is Tierra Marie. How you doing? Wendy Williams experience. Let's listen to a piece of that John Legend song. I like the the one with um the I know that it's one by himself and then the other version is with Lauren Hill. I like both ways. But it's nice to hear this one with Lauren Hill, right? Let me see that yeah. And they're a perfect marriage together too. You know what I'm saying? Both earthy and whatnot. She sounds really good. And her voice has always been great, whether she's singing or whether she's rhyming. She's just got an incredible voice. She's got the voice and the forcefulness of a woman who's seven feet tall. Right? She hasn't lost it at all. But she hasn't lost her talent. Yeah. Still got it. Yes. Bring in John Legend. We're just ordinary people. Uh, I love this man. Hey. Mm, great to see you. Have a seat, Legend. Now, I want you to know that um, I know that this is only our second time sitting down and having conversation on the radio. I think it's the third time. Is this our third time? Yeah, I think I've been to see you three times. The, wow. Yeah, it's and, the third time. And I know I've seen you on the red carpet before. Yeah, yeah. But I want you to know that you've become a friend in my head. Okay. That's special status. No, why is that? <laughs> well, let me just explain what that means. That means, you know, somebody that either you've never met before or somebody that you've met, but you but don't, know, you don't well. know them that well. But if you did know them well, yeah. they would be your dear friend. Okay. I don't know what it is about you, but you've got a certain thing. And it doesn't happen very often with men. 
with me. I mean, okay. you know, there there are women, you know, in Hollywood. Vanessa Williams, for instance, I know her uh, through the microphone. I don't know her deep enough, yeah. but she's a very dear friend in my head. Okay. Oprah is a dear friend in my head. Heather Locklear is a dear friend in my head. Who knows if you really be friends with them if you got to know them? Well, that's why I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> okay. I don't want to spoil it. In my head, you're my friend. Okay. That's special. All right, Wendy. <laughs> so anyway, so John Legend is, is by this time around because he is part of the lineup at the legendary Apollo Theater. Now, you're performing at the Apollo tonight. Yeah, I'm headlining there tonight. And uh, who else is going to be there? Uh, there's a girl named Estero. She's from Canada. She's, uh, <laughs> she's bringing you on. Nah. Oh, she's you, she's opening the show. Yes, yes. Open, yes. opening yeah. the show. Now, you're going to be with a full band. Full band. And, and do you sit most of the time when you... When uh, you half s- and half. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably more on the piano, just a little bit, but half and half. i got to get up and I want greet you- the people a little bit. Yeah, 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 that's nice. I want you to know that part of uh, the seduction of John Legend, to me, in my mind, uh-huh. was also seeing you on the Gap commercial. You like that? I just... I love whoever did the direction of those commercials and, you know, they're that good. particular they're ad good. camera. They're real good. They got me some good exposure. I got a nice few billboards around the country. Yeah. Around the world, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real good. So how's life treating you, Legend? Life is very, very good. Good. I'm enjoying myself. Nice. Now, you um, were on the tour with um, Kanye. Are you Are you, Are you? you no. on that Kanye tour I'm not on that tour, no. Because I guess if you were, you wouldn't be here now. I wouldn't be here now. And Common left, I know, because he had to do a movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Did they ask you to be on that tour? But then you said you were we busy. Couldn't, doing- we couldn't do it because I was just finishing a tour overseas when, yeah. when they were going out. And I, I just couldn't go right to another tour right yeah. away. And we just couldn't work out the details. So, you know, I, I just did. I'm just doing a few dates this uh, fall in the States. And that's about it. Yeah. Uh, do you like tour life? You know, in the you know, hotels and stuff? I do. I do. I'm having fun. Yeah. yeah. And you get to throw your clothes all around. Are you, do, are you a neat freak? I'm not a neat freak. I, I throw my clothes around. But I got to pack them up the next day, so you can't really throw them around that much. You don't have <laughs> yes people who pack them up for you? My brother helps sometimes, but I usually do it myself because I want to know where everything is. Yeah. Is it is it, is it difficult having your brother as as one of the people around you? No, nah, it's good. You need you need family around. And is he an older brother or younger brother? He's my brother? older brother. And then my younger brother, he's, a, he's about to be an artist, too, so I'm about to start bringing him out on the road, too. Nice. Yeah. So then as opposed to having, like, the young lady from Canada opening up for you when you do things, you'll have your own brother. Possibly. It's good yeah. to be the king. Hey, where, where are your album sales now? We're at 2 million around the world. Look We're at you. About 1.4 and a half around uh, in the U.S. A big star, no matter how doing you cut it. Doing all right, it. doing all right. So how has life changed at the home from, where do you call home? Still New I'm York? still in New York. Uh, I'm never here, but yeah. I, I officially live in New York. It, now, did you purchase an apartment? Yeah, or? I, I bought a place um, like in January. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't got to really live there yet, though. Well, <laughs> have, you, have you decorated it, or do you hire somebody to do that? I hired somebody to do that. I, I don't have the patience to decorate it myself. <laughs> See, in my mind, uh-huh. you, or you decorate. The thing is, I, I'm not even that into that. <laughs> In my mind, yeah. we go to ABC Home and Carpet together. Nah. Just not enough interest. I hire no. somebody to do that. I, I tell her to show me stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you live with anybody? Do you, you know, a manager, your brother, anybody like that? No, no, not right now. And how is how is your your money? Because I know, I know, you know, you sold so many uh, CDs and whatnot. The money is, at the very least, got to be better than it was when you first stepped into the oh, game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm paid. <laughs> and, and you get money uh, left over to really luxuriate. Not just to live and pay your bills. Luxuriate means, you know. You know, I don't even... I haven't even really spent no money on myself, really, other than my apartment a little bit. I get free clothes all the time, so I don't buy that. Right. Buy that. I get. I bought some furniture for my place, but most of the stuff I just give to my family. Really. That's very nice. I know I'm sounding like St. John right now, but nah. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, and, and you live in Manhattan, so yeah. what, you don't own a car. You do car service every place, yeah. and that gets paid for by your label. By the label. Because you're making them so much money. Exactly. Life is good. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. How's your health? You it's doing good. well? I'm, I'm healthier than ever. Actually, I've been working out a lot. Just good trying to get right. Yeah, you look good. Feel good. You know, you can gain a lot of weight on the road. Yeah, I, I gained a lot of weight last year. When I was on the road with Kanye and them, I was just, you know, chilling, partying, yeah. eating, drinking, whatever. But once I started doing my own tour, like singing every night, 90 mm-hmm. minutes a night, mm-hmm. it's tough on your body. So you got to actually be in shape. Yeah. And so yeah. I just brought a trainer out on the road and started working out. Yeah. Now you got very, very nice skin. Thank you. You're particularly yellow, so bad yes. skin shows up on yes. a particularly a yellow man like brother, you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, no, do you get facials? Never got a facial. Do you use scrub? What's your regimen? I use um, just some uh, facial cleanser, some mm. Kiehl's. Yeah. 
the kills burn. Now, what do you do with your hair? Your hair looks good, too. Nicely uh, I just moisturized. Get it, I just get it lined up and, uh, and then put a little moisturizer in it. Yeah. Now, do you line up your own beard? Or do you, do My you brother does it. He's a, he's a barber, too. Why aren't you the pampered uh, one? <laughs> so what are some of the things that you refuse to let go of? Like, are you a bit of a control freak with certain things? I know you said you like to pack your own stuff. Yeah, I'm more controlling about my money. Like, I'm more like, I need to know where all my money's being spent. I'm, everybody on my tour thinks I'm kind of cheap, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably what I'm most controlling about. Do you, do you, um... I guess you probably either do you, do you sign your mortgage check every month or or, or are you? No, in I'm charge? a business manager, but I but I look over everything. Yeah, uh, I don't have to sign the checks. They yeah. sign them for me. Yeah, they sign them for yeah. you. Yeah, but I look over everything. I get a statement every month. Have you ever been robbed? You know, from somebody around I you. Been you know? robbed. The thing is, I don't I don't wear jewelry, so I don't have like I ain't the like the obvious target like a lot of cats in the game. Right. Where you know you be in a restaurant, cats will just come up and take all your chains. I ain't got no chains to yeah, take. Yeah. I don't even carry that much cash. So right. somebody robbed me, I'm not I'm not a very lucrative target. <laughs> can I can we look in your pockets and see what what you got going on in there? Yeah. Do you right. mind? <laughs> all right, yeah, you just pull the stuff out as we chat. It's real so it's it's real basic. Okay, here's John Legend wallet. Now is this a real skin what is this crocodile? It was a Christmas gift. I don't know what is in it. It's very, very worn. Oh, and here's your license. There's That's Sean me. Legend. Longer Dad, hair. This was before you were famous. Yes, exactly. Boy, is money good. <laughs> money is a beautiful thing. Yo, Legend, this looks like a mugshot. Yeah. You got yeah. your American Express gold card. Yes, gold yes, is still indeed. fine with you. You don't got the black card. No, the you don't black have the platinum. Yet. They need to upgrade me as much money as we spend with them on a the tour. So. Oh, I see Let's your see. real name. Yeah. But I see the name of your company also, John Legend Tour Inc. Yeah. Oh, touring ink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you. Look at that. Did you have your company before you became famous? Uh, well, I incorporated right before I became famous. And you had a vision. Well, I had a vision a long time ago. About, yeah. About how this is going to yeah. go down. So is this all you have? I don't want to go through every single yeah, card. Yeah, just, like, you're like my it's friend. Just regular stuff, you know. I like give you a hard time. License. How much money do you have there in your hand? Probably a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. No weed. I don't really smoke that much. Yeah. But you do. I mean, you know. I don't smoke anymore. Really. We, I used to we, smoke. Do, we do in my head <laughs> after we come back from shopping. Sure. Why would we go shopping together, Wendy? <laughs> because that's what I do with you. <laughs> okay. In my head. Okay. And we talk. You probably got a different vision of me than, than I really am. You even have time for me on the telephone. We talk on the phone. I'm not even a phone person, okay. but, but we talk. That's funny because I'm not a phone person. Me neither. <laughs> Okay, but you, but you, you're a phone person with me. How's okay. your love life? What's all doing? My love life, it's I'm in between. In between relationships. Yes, exactly. So, wh how long ago did you let go of the old relationship? That was about a month ago, actually. Oh, oh, yeah. you're still brooding. No, I'm fine. Are you still in love? Mm, well, I wasn't in love in the first place. How long were you with? We were just dating for like three months. So, still getting telephone calls from? No. Are you still tempted to call? Yes. <laughs> so what do you do to distract yourself? You could call me, say. That's why we talk on the phone in my head. You call me, you I say. Could, I could call you Wendy. Wendy, I got to be honest with you. You know, I'm we're so tempted to, you know, pick up the phone and call. Yeah. I could. So you say you weren't really in love, but you're tempted to call. What do you miss about that old relationship? She, uh, she, I don't know. Uh, we had a, we had, we had good times. And, uh. The sex. <laughs> Look at that. It's not as much about the sex. You're emotional. That's why you're my friend in my head. I mean, the sex is good, but you need the more. The sex is very good. Yeah, but you need more. What did you need from her that she wasn't giving? Um, uh, nah, it was cool. It no, was let's, let's talk. This is what we do in my head. No, 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 no. We're not going to get into details about it. Is she a showbiz girl? We're not going to get into details about it. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're in between. Yeah. You've uh, uh, that means that you've already made the bridge. You're seeing somebody now. Mm, I'm seeing different people now. Uh, good. Yeah. Good. Are That's you having fun. sex with 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 everybody? Some of them. <laughs> When's the last time you had sex? Recently. Today? Not today. Yesterday. Recently. <laughs> Look at Legend. Look at Legend. We talk about this in my head after, oh, after the show. Oh, sure. <laughs> I call you on my drive home. Okay. All right. And we'll chat. <laughs> I like you, John. Legend. I like you too, Wendy. I like you a lot. So look, so we've, we've talked so many different times yeah. that I always know that you'll be coming back. Yeah, so sure. we're going to let you go we're now. We're going to be friends. Yes. In my head. <laughs> I'm scared you'll disappoint, and I'll probably disappoint you, so we'll just you keep it like this. You disappoint me sometimes. It's cool I, legend. 
Yeah, that's funny. That's not me. That's Art. Okay. That's Art. Yeah. The, and there he is right there. What's up, Art? How you doing, brother? You good? You Constantly doing? disappointing. That's I like cool. your whole camp, though. Kanye was in here, and Kanye, you know, he's a super dude. And, and um, how's your dad, by the way? My dad is good. He, he just got in town, actually. Good. What up, dad? Good, good. He's got and in does town. he stay with you, or does he stay there? In he the, lives in Ohio. My whole family's in Ohio. No, when he comes to town. Uh, he's staying at, well, I don't even live in my place yet. I'm at a hotel. He stays so. at a hotel. Yeah. All right, check out John Legend if you're in New York tonight. He's going to be at the Apollo Theater. Sir, yeah. Wendy's my head. Wendy. Good to see you. Talk to you on my commute home. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Legend. <laughs> Good to see you. It's Wendy, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The Wendy Williams Experience. WBL. You're calling number 10. Oh, my God. Guess what? <laughs> you just picked up your share of the money. You just picked up $1,000. I got to pull over, girl. I'm driving. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You could be our next winner. Well, I'm glad that we've made life a little easier for you, Bert. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let everybody know the only radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. I love 107.5 WBLF. Yeah. Imagine giving the perfect gift, one that's bound to make everyone happy. Your Aunt Carol could open a new best friend. Oh, your two nephews will happily fight over there. Yeah, cool. Isn't it time your neighbor Liz experienced a... (laughs) And your golf buddy Jason always wanted a... Oh, boy. And your granddad. He can finally get his... Well, I'll be. And the source for all this happiness? The American Express gift card. It's how you give them endless choices to experience what they really want. For everything from sporting goods to a spa to a romantic dinner. I love you. Oh. Give the American Express gift card. Because instead of one place, it's good all over the place. Available at Rite Aid and Dwayne Reed. Usable in the United States where American Express cards are accepted. Usage restrictions and guidelines apply. Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. If you call me right now, you can get your share of $107,000. We just giving you a thousand, though, but that's still a lot of money. We call number 10 at 212 $1,000 right here from 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the phones. You're calling number one. WBLS, you're calling number two. You're calling number three, and you're calling number four. You're calling number five. You're number six. Lucky number seven, but not today. You're calling number eight. And you're number nine. Whoa! WBLS, you're calling number ten. Congratulations. Oh <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, well, thank you. WBLS? Oh, my God. All day, this every day. Mm. Yes, yes. Well, what's your name? My name is Ethelyn. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from Inglewood, New Jersey. Well, terrific. You're $1,000 richer in our $107,000 cash guarantee. Yes, thank you so much. You got your oh, share of the money. God. Oh, my God. I needed this so much. How, how you are you going to spend it? Oh, my God. There's so many things that I need to take care of, I, and, and it's going to help so much. Well, we're glad to be here for you, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Well, everybody, if you want to be a winner like Evelyn, make sure that you're listening again tomorrow morning. The winning begins at 7.15 with the Steve Harvey Morning Show, again at 12.15 with Mark Jordan, and then, of course, right here on the Wendy Williams Experience, we do the damn thing, too. <laughs> All right, Evelyn, let everybody know your station. WBLS. Hold on, Ev. We're going to take your information behind the scenes. That's how it goes down, everybody. We're the only radio station in town with the $107,000 cash guarantee. Write it down, know it, and listen all day. Not just for the money, but for the music and all that. Long Island City, what's going on? WBLS is going to be out there. We're joining forces with Affinity at 12 noon on Saturday. We're going to be over at the Haunted Village in Queensbridge. And that's on 10245 41st Avenue. Admission is free over there at the Haunted Village in Queensbridge. And then on Sunday, from 11 a.m. 
to 6 p.m. You can join WBLS and our street team. We're going to be at the Brooklyn's, uh, the Brooklyn Children's Museum. That's at 145 Brooklyn Avenue. Get ready for some spooky fun there, too. And the Halloween and the Harvest Festival. So, you know, Saturday and Sunday, we're out and about celebrating Halloween with you. <clears throat> and staying connected with the community, because that's what we do here. We specialize in that. 107.5 WBLS. Bonus hours coming up at the top of the hour. It was fun having John Legend in here. It was fun having David Allen Greer, Drew Frazier in here. Don't forget to check them out. Later on tonight, two shows over at the um, Linden Theater. <clears throat> two shows, comedy, comedy, comedy. It's going to be a good one. And shout out to Jerome Carter, the psychic that came in earlier. He's um, actually an international numerologist and spiritual advisor. And he does have a website. If you're interested at all, go to goodonlydoneproductions.com. Goodonlydoneproductions.com. Productions.com. G O D. Say the G O D. The good only done productions.com. He's got a 1 800 telephone number, too. I'd be a fool not to give it to you since, you know, he was apparently accurate and dead on with some of you all's readings. You all were yesing and, mm -hmm and, and oh, how'd you know him? So it's 1 800 242 0363, extension 1220 for Jerome Carter. And, um, oh, Don King is here? Oh, wait, we'll, wait, we'll wait a moment. Okay. Yeah, we'll wait a moment because right now we're going to continue through the commercials and play some music. And we'll be back with Don King to close out, well, to close out the larger part of the show. Then, of course, you and I have our time together during the bonus hour. That was special. As a matter of fact, I think we have a guest during the bonus hour, too. Mm. I th think. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Don King was supposed to be the guest during the bonus hour. Yes, yes, I believe so. No, you don't believe so. You just said, do you want him now or do you want him in a few minutes? <laughs> well, he's here, so... <laughs> Yeah, but he's more than just a few minutes. Yes. You know, you got to give him a few minutes just to get all his words and suck all the oxygen out of the room with all the en energy. Yeah. Yeah. I love Don King. All right. So we'll continue with the break. Don't forget, Vaughn's up at 7 o'clock with the Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Uh, the levels, the levels, the levels is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your girl, Remy Martin, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody. All right, it's about time to go. By the way, happy birthday to the lovely Ruby, Ruby D. She's 81 today. And so Al Udoin was arrested. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, we were just talking about him yesterday, right? With Star and the cans lined up and Al Udoin taking care of the future adopted child and all like that. Well, the cops apparently um, arrested Al. For driving with a suspended license in Manhattan. That happened yesterday morning. He was driving on 3rd Avenue. And when he changed lanes without signaling, the cops pulled him over. The police realized that um, he was driving with a suspended license. So they arrested him. And this was at 2.48 a.m. So he was out and about in Manhattan doing his thing. Yeah, you know it. And um, he used his one phone call to call Star and say, honey, I'm in jail. It happens. You know, that suspended license thing, I got to tell you, motor vehicles, boy, and they barely know how to notify you when your license is suspended. It's, it's like, you know, luck of the draw when the cops pull you over. Don't ever be surprised if you read about me with a suspended license, because I swear I can't keep up with it. I, I pay my tickets, but you know how that suspension just creeps in. It just does. It just does. Uh, also, um, Alan Iverson and Reebok celebrated their 10 years together, 10 years of endorsement. They had a big party at the Canal Room in New York, and um, he also introduced his new shoe uh, called um, The Answer Four. It's his tenth shoe with Reebok, and it's going to be in stores on um, November November fourth. Um, and Jay Z on Tuesday celebrated the opening of his new Forty Forty Club in D in um not D C in Atlantic City. Another piece to the empire. It's a four million dollar um, structure, fifteen thousand square feet. He says he wants to open, um, 
you know, many more of them. Of course, Beyonce was on hand, and Kelly and Michelle were there. Puffy was there. Friend to the show, Terrell Owens was there. Terrell, rather. Um, Timberland was there. Magic Johnson was there, all celebrating with Jay-Z. Um, next stop, Los Angeles. After that, he wants to do Las Vegas and then Singapore. Yep. The first 4040 Club was opened in New York back in 2003. So, he's on a world tour with the brand. No stopping it. In the meantime, what else do we have? Oh, Paul Wall got married. Did we talk about this yet? No. Is this shocking to anybody? I don't really know that much about his uh, personal life to, you know, know one way or the other. Is she black? I don't know. Does it make a difference? Yeah, because he's like a wigger. I know. When a wigger marries a white girl, does like that... Like search. Well, when a, if, a, if a wigger white person, like, if they marry a white girl, does that show that the whole, that, that their essence is still very white? Yes, yes. Or, or is it that you don't can't help but you fall in love with art? Oh, that's true, too. But no. <laughs> <laughs> like when Search, who um, who's always had like a black thing about him, when Search married the black girl, yeah. did that just smack the ball home that he's true to the wiggerness? No. So if Paul Wall is married to a white woman, what does that say? That he, that he's putting up a front. It's a front. Yes. What if she's a wigger herself? Oh, then they had the two peas in the pod. Well, what if she's like a like Jenny Jenny Garth from Nine Hundred Two One Zero? You know, like real white. Mm, then it's an act. It's an act. It's an act. Well, her name is Crystal. It could be either or. Yeah, that's either or. <laughs> Crystal's a popular black girl name, but it's also a popular white girl name. Well, it's his longtime girlfriend, and that's all we know about her. Is his longtime girlfriend. It was a low key ceremony. He got married in his uh, hometown. Where is he from? Texas, right? Houston. Down south. Mm-hmm. And um, that's it. That's all we know. Mary J. Blige, still doing things. Um, she has teamed up with Tamira Gray to do something, some sort of promotional something or another for H&M. Isn't that nice? It's part of promoting their new line of designer jeans. You can watch the video that Mary's doing to promote this at H&MUS.com. So it's H&M.US.com. That's, what, that's how they want you to type it in. And shout out to the Kid Capri. Apparently, he's uh, doing a 24-hour party service called Party, party Alerts. And for 20, you know, 24 hours a day, you can call up and I guess he'll tell you where the party is. Where the party's at. Another way to make money. Go kick a free. <laughs> Donald Trump is denying ever dating Robin Givens. Well, whoever believed he did? <laughs> well, I don't even believe he has black people working in his home. <laughs> Much less thinking about, you know, touching one's hands. I mean, he's not a handshaker to begin with. So, you know. But here's what this story says. Property tycoon Donald Trump has slammed the author of a new unauthorized biography claiming that he once had an affair with the black actress Robin Givens. Here's Donald's statement. It's not true. Hmm. Do you believe that he ever dated Robin Givens? I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. No. I don't believe it for a minute. Usher's got a new movie that's going to be coming out called In the Mix. It's a take on The Bodyguard. Yeah? That bodyguard-esque type feel. That's what they say. I don't know what that means, but, um, you know. Oh, and Jennifer Lopez, ad property developer to her list of accomplishments. Yep. Some waterfront property there in Miami, and she is down with the partnership. Real estate developer, perfume mogul, clothing mogul, music mogul, movie mogul, TV mogul. Is there anything that she doesn't do? Well, she isn't. She's not that good at marriage. No. Okay, singer. Oh, no, no, no. She sold lots of albums. No, leave her alone. Okay. She's not that good at marriage, but it's lasting so far with um, Mark Anthony. 
I hear she's been in and out of, um, you know, the baby making type places. I don't know how true that is. So um, she wants that desperately. So we can't say whether she's a good mother or not. Not yet. But she's working on it. All right, you guys. Don't forget to go to the website, okay? The Wendy Williams Experience.com if you care. Um, yesterday's people poll question was Is your cell phone your only means of communication? Or do you have a landline as well? And 60% of you said, yes, your cell phone is it. That is it. The new people poll question, do you like watching other people having sex? Is that, I mean, whether you do it or not is irrelevant. The point is, is it, do you like it? Is, is that your mentality? Art made up that question. No more question making up for you, Art. What a weird question. Although I do like finding out more and more about the audience. And that's our way of doing it through the people poll question. Look, I love you good people for listening today. David Allen Greer, thank you. You're a fabulous man. Drew Frazier, fabulous, stellar. And by the way, Drew, I wish you luck with the Comedy uh, Central deal. And you can check both of them out in Brooklyn at the Linden Theater tonight. They're two shows, 7.30 and, 11, or 7:30 and 9.30. Also, thank you to Jerome Carter, the psychic, um, numerologist, life coach for coming in. Who else came in? Huh? John Legend. Oh, my gosh. Ordinary friend in my head. Uh, Love you, Legend. Thank you so much for stopping by. And you good people, I love you for listening. Have a great rest of the, you know. Bye. Please pardon me, boy. (laughs) See you later. Good night. Program complete. Okay, so we have Don King for the bonus hour. Uh-oh. I'll let you get on get in on it if you want. If there's something particularly that you want to ask him, feel free to call up while he's here, okay? Um, while our guest is here, and when we go to the telephones, can I just ask one favor of you guys, and that is fall back off questions regarding gossip or advice and so on and so forth. If you're not going to um, call and, and speak to our guests, then we'll just wait and wait for him to leave, and then you and I can talk with each other, okay? All right, so it's Don King. It's more gossip. We do advice. It's radio personality. Jenny's guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord. Have I ready for this day? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Hey, 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 everybody. I'm not going blind. Right. I had my CAT scan today. I was able to get my results right away. I didn't tell you guys that the um, that the main reason for it was um, to find out whether I'll eventually go blind. I don't have anything wrong with my eyes at all Good. right now. But the whole thing about having thyroid disease, which is related to Graves disease, which is in the eyes. Um, that's remember when Barbara Bush's eyes popped out. That's all a part of Graves disease. You guys tell me I get the pop eyes. That's all a part of Graves disease. <clears throat> The muscles squeeze on the optic nerve in the back and, um, you know, through a CAT scan and a next level eye specialist, not an eye doctor who prescribes glasses, but the eye specialist that I go to, um, Dr. Uh, Della Rocco. Hey, Dr. Della. Anyway, um, he's able to see and project. Wendy, you know, you will eventually, you know, lose your sight due to Graves' disease or whatever. I mean, you're able to see that through the CAT scan, through the, some, some sort of the, the eye muscles and space between the muscles and all that other kind of stuff. So he said, no, I'm not going to go blind. Yeah. I didn't want to tell you guys yesterday. That's why I was going, because it's enough. I mean, I don't want you to think I'm crazy. You know, you know, the cancer check one day, the blindness check the other, you know, you know what I'm saying? But I'm out of the woods and I have no more doctor's appointments uh, for another two weeks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's something to, something to get checked in two weeks I, I don't know what I, I have to make the decision in my head 
I just like to stay on top of things. I told you I want to live and I want to see. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I don't know what I would have done if he said, um, yes, you, you do uh, have a lot of squeezing of the muscle and you probably have, you know, maybe three more years or five more years or something like that. Yeah, well, I would start lining up the house now, setting it up for blindness. You know, let's sell a house. Let's move to a ranch. Let me feel all around. Let me start ordering everything in Braille so that, you know, one day, let me start reading it now. Let me start really looking at people as opposed to looking through them, you know, when I'm walking down the hall. Let me, you know, start really, you know, enjoying the colors of fall and, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, please. I pressed the panic button in my head. Paranoia. Yes, the paranoia. Alas, I can can see and I'm going to be able to see. Let's bring Don King in. Jeez, if I could, if I had to miss this visual spectacular, oh, Mr. King, you always look so so handsome. It's so, it's just you so gorgeous. Thank you, Mr. King. Love you so much. Oh, that is always a nice hug. Hi guys, hey. Hey, girls. Hey, hey. Don King's here, everybody. It's just such a the pleasure King to be with Wendy. Mr. King, somebody turn the lights down. Can we turn the lights back up? One of your guys. You're bigger than you. No, wrong no, light. Wrong light. Sorry, sorry. Twist. Yeah, Twist. Yeah. Up, yeah. Mr. King, you know I love dimmers. Dimmers really set the mood. Yes, they do for the occasion, whatever it may be. Yes. And then you can put the dimmers on uh, according to how you y- want it to be. Yes. Oh, Wendy, you're so wonderful. Oh, Donnie. So enlightening and so in- inspiring. Oh, Donnie. Yes, she is the number one lady in the world. She just happens to be black. Oh, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Don, to what do we owe this fabulous, magnanimous... Come on, give me some more dining. Splendiferous. Splendiferous. <laughs> Visit. It is only because I'm here to praise the friars because they did not discriminate like other Americans did in the hitherto four years before us. As you know, when we were blacks were being lynched, castrated, put to the put to the pit, roasted on the stake. Yes. The friars has only roasted three blacks in a hundred years. Who were those and, three blacks? It was Richard Pryor. And that was the buddy. Well, I say that crazy to, to kill that crazy end. You know what Richard Price to be a big billboard, you uh-huh. know. And then that was Whoopi Goldberg. Yes. And yours truly. And you know, but I- we live to last and talk about it again. See, yes. but the other lynching, you didn't come back. You paid the supreme sacrifice. Yes. You know what I mean? So I just want you know. I just feel so good that this non-discriminatory organization, the Friars Club, the in Friars New York. Club in New York, with Big Don Trump. Big Don Trump telesynergistic got to look and their business acumen to be a multi-billionaire, you know. Mm-hmm. Yet he's the roast master for my roast here. Isn't that something? On Friday tomorrow, so everybody should be there. It really is. It's going to be something. Now all these people that dislike me, that can say all these nasty things, calumniate, character assassinate, the villain, all the villainy they have, they can sit to my face, and I would just love that. Rather than going behind the scenes to do it. And the only one that's ever treated me with such an accord has been Wendy. Oh. Thank you, Mr. King. Wendy is terrific. I have to say that to friend and war like, let the word go forth. Wendy is here and she's proud and no one can be prouder to be on Wendy's show than myself. She's dynamic. And even the lights go out. They pay homage to her. Thank the you. The lights go on and off in Wendy's world. Thank you, Mr. King. Yes. Might I say, there is something rather... Um, you know, this is a somber Don King compared to the usual you. Yes, well, it's, you know, I've, I've been through some difficulty. When I came in from Germany, I went to the um, hospital because I had, some, had some, 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 some kind of a pain. And they put me in Mount Sinai. Was it no. Mount Sinai or Sinai? Right up here in New York. Do I know my Don or do yeah. I know my Don? You know I him. knew when you walked in, I said, there's something There's something not as big yes, as there's usual. there's something on your mind. Oh, Donnie, how do you feel? I feel good now because, good. you know, as a doctor that I just want to say, she was just great, Dr. Terry. She recommended me and looked at me, and then she sent me to Dr. Fisher. Yes. And Dr. Fisher sent me to Dr. Schumer. Mm-hmm. You know, and after that, I was in there. They gave me one of those, what, the angioplastic? Yes. Right? You had to prevent uh, the byway pass. Yes. But to unplug the arteries. Oh. Oh, I'm alive. I'm oh, alive. Yes. Oh. And I can see. I'm, I'm alive. alive. Don. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don, yesterday I, got the, yesterday I took a biopsy to find out whether I had thyroid cancer, and oh. today I had a CAT scan to find out whether I might, if I'm eligible to become blind later on in life. Don't worry about it. The point is, is that isn't good health the best gift? 
Being alive. This is what I say, Don. Being alive. I want to live forever. Oh, God, you shall. You will live and live. And even when you are passed from this earth, you'll be from everlasting to everlasting. They will be talking about you because you are a dynamite. Thank you, Don. Yes. Now Let me to, turn this thing off. Don, who is that calling? I understand Robin Givens is going to be at your roast tomorrow night, Don. Well, I guess Wait a minute, Mr. Mr. President Bush. Okay. Yes, yes Mr. President. Yes, thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. All right, right now I'm with Wendy. Thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> Did he say that George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams? No, George Bush is tried, true, tested representative of the people. I know he's getting little blows now. But, yes. But he's 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 holding he's holding court and he's keep moving on. Did he accept your phone call when you called to criticize his handling of Hurricane Katrina? Oh, uh, he did. You know what? And not only that. After that, he went and made that dynamic speech and accept the blame for the discrimination. The man is a terrific man. You got to understand something about George Bush. Many of the people that I've supported in life and supported Bush, they all get mad at me because me being an African American. They say, and, "Why, Don? Why? why?" Because the man had he says what he means, means what he says, and he had more intestinal fortitude than many, many, in fact, any of them that ever been there. Mm -hmm. And with regards to black people. So would you know, first of all, symbolism is the strongest thing. It's, it's un, is, it is uncorruptible and it's everlasting. Yes. What he did for blacks, what they don't understand, it may be some programs that may have been short-sighted on funding, but what he did is establish a criteria that blacks are not lazy, lethargic, can't rise to the occasion, shiftless, worthless, and no account, and all lies, cheating, cheat and steal. Mm -hmm. That's what they said about us. Now, this man put blacks in a high position, capable of positions that they were not sink or faints, and they were not toadies, and so he raised the bar of dignity, he raised the bar of pride, he raised the bar of hope and aspiration, so black kids don't have to just tote a football, hit a baseball, or, or slide and glide on a, sta on a, on a stage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They can learn and learn to earn and get the acumen to say, I can be president. I can truly be this. And then he took for the black woman, who is the fertile field from which we come, from her Lowering Springs nation time. He took her and put her in a position that she's the most powerful lady in the world. No matter what anyone says, she's going to all these different countries. And she's acquitting herself with greater plumb. She's dynamic, and that's Dr. Rice. I mean, so it did a lot for us. Doing? It did a lot for us on all all fronts, you know what I mean? Not only one minority to another, uh, from uh, black to minorities that are white, mm -hmm. but they took the black woman, and what you so beautifully epitomizes, you know what I mean? And this is what it means when you have this here. So this is things that, these are symbols that they can use forever. And those symbols are uncorruptible and everlasting. And the symbolism means more than anything you could do or buy with money because it's a symbol. Now you say, remember Dr. Rice. You remember this one, Dr. King. Right. He's a symbol now with us. Just as you will be, you know what I mean? But that will be like 100 years from now before you leave. You'll be still walking on your cane and you'll be doing it to death. You know, yes, young man. Wendy, what should I do? You know, I know I just want to agitate, young man. Agitate, you know what I mean? Just keep fighting for right. And don't give in, don't give up, and don't quit. You in it to win it. Thank you, Don. <laughs> yes, yes, now, yes. You know, as long as you're talking, I want you to keep talking. Uh, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is touring the nation right now. He's going to... Um, a little over a dozen high schools around the country um, touting his message that uh, black people need to pull up their pants, you know, speak better English, continue to get educated and, and make something of ourselves instead of sliding backwards and trampling over the things that were set up with us via the civil rights movement. He's not very happy at all with the new generation of black. Well, I have to agree with him on they should put up their pants and their legs and they should learn and they should speak more uh, eloquently and more articulately. Uh, I think he should also give the cause and the reason why they speak in the broken English and the, you know, the sort of like, you know, you know, can't that they come up with because these are the, these are the scars and wounds of slavery. He must understand from which we come to understand in which way we are going. I love Bill Cosby and I think he's just absolutely right that some of us, you know, we play the game and we want to lay off and, and be 
uh, we want to just get something for nothing and get it by osmosis. Mm. But the cause and origin of that is slavery. When they take away all of your rights and everything that you had, and you have to say, y'all's a boss, and you have to say, ma'am, and you have to say, our house is burning down. You know what I mean? Because that was the way that you can curry favor from the master. Mm. You know what I mean? And so what he wants to do, stop that, but he got to, we got to teach them to understand that slavery is not a badge of dishonor because the Jews have been slaves and everywhere you go, the Normans and the Saxons, they've had slavery, the vanquished and the, and the, and the, the one who was the conqueror. Uh, so you have to go back to the cause, not treat the treatment you know, like Band-Aid for cancer. you got to go out and diagnose the case and prescribe treatment to arrest it and to try to cure it. So I think that he's absolutely right in what we need to do, what we can do, we can deal with it in that manner. Now, when I was in the prison, many people are incarcerated, you know what I mean? But, you know, many blacks out here are mentally incarcerated and they don't want to parole, you know what I mean? How, so, long, how long were you in a prison, Don? Four years. Four excruciatingly I painful years. Oh. I, oh. I watched your story many times on um, HBO. And, you and it was all wrong, you know. They never did nothing right, you know. Whatever they did on yeah. HBO, you know what I mean. It was a, it was a comedy of errors, you know what I mean. That they they would intend to kill, but it backfired because I have such a personality that I can God speaks for me, and I can get with people, and no matter whether the language is, I can I can relate and identify with them. And so this is what really makes things happen for me. But they did put it out there; it made me bigger by trying to kill me. But the same token, I I respect that too because you know. What they say, uh, when you try to imitate, it's the highest form of flattery, yes. you know. How is Mrs. King? She's fine. I always like to ask you about her. Now, is she in town oh, for your you. roast? No, she's not here for the roast. She hasn't seen me be roasted for 50 years, so, you know, it's nothing new to her. You know what I mean? So, yes. therefore, I'm going to I'm gonna ride, this, I'm gonna ride this horse, and then we're going to go back and talk about it. Because for the first time, they'll be talking about me to my face. As and they'll be saying it in just, you know, highest form of self-deprecating humor. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's what the Friars did. They brought riches together by bringing in comedy and entertainment. So now this is open to John Q. Public. People can purchase a ticket and, and yes, see it's it Yes, it's $1,000 a ticket, and they would love to have you there. And uh, and uh, it got over 1600 right now. Ken Roberts is the promoter of this event, along with a guy named Bruce Yarrett. But Ken Roberts is my man. He's a dynamic individual. So... Uh, what we're going to do for the listeners, for people who don't have necessarily that $1,000, oh. is we're going to have our own Don King roast yes, right here. Yes, you know, here. right here. Now, not only that, not only that, you know what I mean, for some of them that want to come, you know, I want them to be there, but I want some color in the audience. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I understand that. <laughs> some, put some color in my life. 866-WENDY. Yeah. Let's get on the phone. Oh, We're talking with Don King. 866-WENDY. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the phone with Don <laughs> King. Go ahead. Okay, hang up on that person. Hello, you're on the phone with Don King. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, uh, Don, how you doing? Pleasure Please. to talk to you. I just uh, wanted to know, uh, where did you come up with the idea that when you got off on those cases that you uh, uh, were acquitted of, to take the whole jury on a vacation? I thought they, <laughs> I thought they richly deserved it, you know what I mean? Had I done it before, they would have called it bribery and locked me up for tampering, jury tampering. But after they had rendered their decision and I asked my lawyer, is it anything inappropriate? He said, no one has never did it. I didn't ask you did, no, how many did it. I said, is it anything illegal or inappropriate? He said, no. I said, by all means, I would like to take you all to London. Wow. How fast. Yes. I, I I thought it was brilliant. I, if, if I could afford it, I would have did the same thing. God case. bless you, my brother, and keep on keeping on. Thank you for calling. Right, take it easy. Bye. Hi, you're on the radio with Don King. It's the bonus hour. Hi, this is uh, Trevor from Queens. Hi, Trevor. We'll talk to Don. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Don. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there with the most beautiful black woman I've ever seen, man, and she is really making me feel good. She exudes charming oh. magnetism, and I'm just, I'm just doing all I can to re contain and restrain myself. Now, come on with what you got to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're a very lucky man to start with. I am Anyhow, lucky. Anyhow, yes, you're very lucky to have that beautiful woman next to you. Oh. Yes, and, the, and I'm that's more lucky to have the life that I have to keep breathing while I'm alive looking at her. Yeah. Yes, I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> and me too. It's good to be alive. Thank you so much for your call. All right. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. You're on the radio with Don King. Okay. You're on the radio with Don King. Hey. Hey, Don. Hey. How you doing? Hey, I, just wanna, I just want to say, you know, you're the best promoter out there, you know, and I wish you nothing but the best in, in everything that you got coming to you for sure. 
God bless you, my man, and I thank you so very, very much. And coming across Wendy's lines, that means so much because we have so many, we got millions of audience out there listening. And if, and if you're not a listener, then touch, call somebody and, you know, touch them and tell a friend and listen to Wendy. 866, what's that number? Get Wendy. Get Wendy. 866, get Wendy. And we want you to continue to doing what you're doing. And watch the roast, man. This is going to be a big roast, but I want the brothers to know about this roast. That roast is all right for the high and the mighty, but I want the low and those who are the downtrodden on the pre- and denied. I want them to be there. Oh, well, That's gee, right. John, they have thousand dollars just to you know toss. Remember the price. Remember yes. the price you're talking about. Here. Well, we want them to just to be able to talk about it. Talk about it. Talk hey, about it. Hey, is this going to be televised? Is this going to be on TV? I don't somewhere? think they're going to let it be televised. Well, yeah, I right, but right, I'm going to film it, and so I may just let all the brothers and sisters see it for nothing. But what do you think the first, the biggest jokes are going to be? They're going to talk about your hair. When they they're they're gonna, they going to flay me. They're going to excoriate me. <laughs> they're gonna, you know what I mean? Believe me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You a new I'm a, I'm you, it's windy, you said it. 866 <laughs> get windy. Let's get you on the phone. Yeah, hello, Jesus. Yeah. Hello. Hi, you're on the radio with hey, Don King. Uh, Mr. King, you got any fights coming up? Yes, I'm now going to Germany. I got a, a world championship fight on November 26th. With Mo Soy and Felix Sturm in uh, in uh, Leverkusen, Germany. Ich bin ein Berliner on the 17th of December. I have uh, 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 in- John Ruiz is going to be fighting a giant Nikolai Valuev. He's about seven feet two. He steps over the ring. And so it's going to be quite exciting to put these guys on. Nothing to match this way about it. No, it's not going. It's going to be in Berlin. In Berlin, in the big arena with 400,000 people. It's fine. I'm Berlin. Thanks for calling. All right. Take care. Hey, Don, wait. You're going to be in Berlin for the fight December 17th? Because I'm going to be in Berlin also. I, I'm going to be there on book business. Well, you should come to the fight. I, not on Ali going to be there. And, and Layla Ali is on the undercard. Ugh, please, I'll be there. Yes. And and a foreign... Florin Merkel, the first lady to ever be Chancellor of Germany, will be there. Her name is Florin Angela Merkel, the new Germany. Inclusion and expansion. I gotta go all the way over to Germany to see Leila Ali fight. <sighs> oh, it's gonna be adorable now that I'm gonna write I'm gonna write that down. Make sure wherever you are, we're gonna find you. I'm gonna send my guys with the car to bring you, you know what I mean, and the soldiers to be there oh. right there to protect you. Oh. You know what I mean? You're a, a jewel. You're a jewel of the now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And thank you. Thank December you, December 17th. Yeah, right I, here with Wendy Bing, Lauren, <laughs> Muhammad Ali, Lonnie Ali, and Layla Ali. Hey, uh, Don, so Rocky Six is about to be made. And they say that uh, Sylvester Stallone is going to, um, is interested in casting either Roy Jones Jr. or Antonio Tarver. Um, have, has he talked with you about possibly being a part of Rocky Six? No, he hasn't, but he talked to me about being a part of Rocky One because he wrote it on one of my fights. And, uh, and me and him, we, that's how Rocky was launched, oh. you know, with Chuck Wepner and Muhammad Ali. And Sylvester was, uh, was trying to get his script going, and, and it, was, uh, it was great. You know, the years I've seen him grow now, and he's got a great sequel a thing there. I think Sylvester's doing very, very well. You know, I remember him when he was walking back and forth down yeah. the street, and I took him to the fight, and the and, uh, rest is history. Well, look at you. Yes, yeah, Sly Stone, baby. Um, everybody, the, the Friars roast is tomorrow night, right? No, tomorrow afternoon is a tomorrow luncheon. Tomorrow afternoon. It's a luncheon right here at the New York Hilton Hotel. It's going to be burning up, you know what I mean, with Don King being roasted there. There's going to be so many different the celebrities there. It's like, oh, you know, yes. I mean, you're paying to see the roast, but you're also paying to be in the same room with so many different people that you admire or, or maybe you don't like, but you've never seen them up close. Well, you're going to have a lot of them here because they say Mary Kay Blige who's having a concert over there night to night with the P. Diddy and, and, and Jay-Z. All of them is going to be it? there, you Mary know, so Kay. it's going be it's gonna be really 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 a super sensational yeah. thing there. Butch Lewis said he's bringing in Denzel Washington from out the BET's 25th anniversary. Uh, they had last night, so he'll be coming in. in. Joe town. Frazier, you this know, big. and then we we'll have Lehman Brewster, the heavyweight champion, who just went to Germany and knocked out the German and knocked him out twice. You know what I mean? Very because nice. the first time they didn't they didn't get to counting, so he knocked him out again. So you know, so it's really just show you that we can overcome difficult difficulties. We rose to the occasion. Yes. Amanda Holt the field of full-time world heavyweight champion is in New York now. He'll be there tomorrow. He wants to make a comeback. I'm sure I've asked you this before, but I, I want to ask you again. Um, did you finish high school? Yes, I did finish high school. 
Yeah, I got high school was the, it's about as high as I got now. Yes. You know, the rest of the I did a couple of courses and things, but when I went to the penitentiary, yes, yes, I learned in the penitentiary, I educated myself within the dark, dreary worlds of confinement. Mm. I wouldn't recommend it, no, you know what I mean. But nevertheless, I made the time serve me rather than to serve the time. And you spent a lot of time reading in the library and knowing yourself. Oh, absolutely. You know, trifles light as air to the jealous confirmation, strong as holy writ. That is Othello with Shakespeare. <laughs> You really got away with words. Oh, girl. Have you always had a way with words like this? Well, you know, he also taught me, sweet are the uses of adversity, which ugly and venomous like the toad, yet wears a precious jewel in his head. I found a jewel in adversity. When they say trouble, that's my nickname. You know what I mean? So all of the things that most people have horrendous effects on them. Uh, uh, they're, they're my neighbors and my cousins, whatever, trouble and humiliation, embarrassment, mm-hmm. you know, jealousy, strife, envy, all of them. So I use them interchangeably. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't you get mad, how, you get smart. You know how to make a lemon, it, lemons into lemonade. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And you can have it sweet and sour or you can have it sweet, 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 and it can't be beat. So whatever your desire is, you know what I mean? Come on with it. We deal with it the best we can in this great nation called America, one land indivisible with liberty and justice. Justice for all. We haven't got there yet, but the struggle is on. Now, how are, how are your children? How many children do you have, John? I have three. One is here. His name is Carl. He's here. Another one is Eric, and my daughter's name is Deborah. And how old are they? Well, I think Carl got to be somewhere close to 50. <laughs> okay. Eric has got to be 50. Debbie is about 40-something, you know. Uh, do they all work within Don King? Well, two of them do. Another one is begging to come back home like the prodigal son. Oh! <laughs> he wanted to do something <laughs> different, yes, did he? he did. His father set it yes. up and rolled out the royal carpet yes. only for him to want to go off and be some damn doctor or something. Yeah. Kill the fatted calf. This, uh, my son is coming home. How dare <laughs> are, Don, are you going to make him suffer before you take him back in? Well, you know, no, not suffer, but I think the punishment, the, you know, that is he's suffering now yes. is, is going to be tantamount to what it is because, you know, he, you know I what, say... What did he want to do? Uh, what did he go out there and try to do when he realized that his dad set him up real nice? He should have stuck with his dad. Well, he wanted to do it on his own, and so he was, he was wildcatting, searching for oil. Looking for the black gold under the earth, and he was always looking for things, but he didn't read Shakespeare when he said everything that glitters is not gold. That's Although right. Although the story has been often told. You know what I mean? You have to be able to deal with what is real and practical. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to be able to take, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is that they're giving you, you got to be able to take it, whether it's negative or not, you know, and, and keep on trying to overcome. Not only that, but he could have taken something from within the Don King thing. And I know for, for a lot of people, they don't want to live in the shadow of their parents or they want to strike out on their own. But they, he could have done something within Don King Enterprises. You've got such a, a big, uh, a big um, interest in all kinds of things and made it his own. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very difficult thing, but you know, you know, love is a mini splinter thing. So you do the best we can with what you have to work with. Yes. You know what I mean? But yes. it's uh, you know, whatever you got to do. Uh, he'll learn to do that, and especially so now because you know he's over fifty. I was gonna say, well, it's good. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, Santa, Papa, grow you know, up, Papa. You know what I mean. <laughs> you you, you got to find something else, yeah, bro. You know what I mean. Oh, this is a great nation. Oh, I love this country. Oh, you're a great man, Don. Thank you so much for coming by again and Wendy. again and again and again. Oh, Wendy, eight six six, get Wendy. Listen, she gonna give you a blow by blow. Oh, you invited to the roast tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Don. Yeah, I'm a bad. Thought I'll take it for you. Oh, wow. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's worth it, man. Oh. She should be there because I want her to relate and to give and, and, and disseminate what she hears and how it is because this is going to be reality of life. You know, we have to take it like we get it, you know what I mean, and leave it like it is, you know? Oh. So, Wendy has to be there. We want 866 Get Wendy at the road so she can give you a blow-by-blow description of what went on, how it went on, and being one of the three that have been roasted legitimately, you know, it's very difficult to find anything bigger than that. It don't get no better than that. Remember remember the big hoopla that Ted Danza called when he dressed in the blackface and for the Whoopi Goldberg roast, remember? Yes, yes, she was the mm-hmm. one, and he was there, you know what I mean, the poor Whoopi, but and what it is, Whoopi is great, and so is Ted. You know what I mean? He was just bringing reality because Al Joseph was saying Mammy. From Al Joseph <laughs> and his Mammy to Richard Pryor uh, and uh, get, the, get the, the niggas crazy, uh, from to that one up to that billboard and to what we're dealing with now in life, you know what I mean? So it's a long way from self-deprecating humor yeah. that would make these things happen. So I'm just really happy uh, that, uh, and I'm one of the oldest members of the Friars in New York. I'm over 30 years a uh, member of the Friars. 
And so uh, Ken yeah. Roberts, who's a great dynamic businessman, and, you know, he said, you know, you should go ahead on and do this thing. You know, and so I'm doing it, and I'm very happy that I am. So if the expense of me being misused and abused for a moment that will help those because it's all for charity. Right. And so you're helping others. You know what I mean? And so you're being able to feed someone or do something that the prize charity do, does. And so it gives me great joy because John Dunn said many years ago, no man's an island in time to himself. Every man's a member of the continent and a part of the main. So when the be- death bell tolls, therefore do not send for who the bell tolls. The t- bell tolls for thee. You know, so when you say, I'm involved with mankind, and say, every man's death diminishes me. So when we've got people that we can help, you know what I mean, and, and by charitable things, that's the highest form you know, of charity is being able to give an opportunity. But then when you can help others, you know what I mean, to help themselves, that is magnificent and magnanimous. And so I'm just happy. We're glad you came by. And and listen, I'm glad everything turned out well, um, you know, with the doctors and stuff. I sensed it when you came in the room. I said, this is not the usual, Don. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, you have money. Half of your energy, but half of your energy is uh, the next man's full energy. You have just so much energy and you were just normal when you came in. You know normal what? is not you. But you see how you did it? You you started to bring it up. You need a good woman like you. Thank you, You know what I mean? But you see what happened? I was in there half dead, decrepit, about to fall over. Now I'm back roaring like the lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Wendy. 866 Dick Wendy. Thank you, Don. Give me a hug. Oh, Give me a hug. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Yes. Always a pleasure to see you. Listen, it's Don it's King, everybody. What America's all about. The Friars are roasting yes. him on Wait Friday. Yeah, we've got to talk about Craig Boogie. Craig, give me that line before I let you get off here. Oh, what's that list? Give me that list of them stars. We got. Oh, it? go ahead, Craig. Craig. Craig, give me those stars. Call them all. Craig is in hustling. Oh, this Craig is, is my man. Yeah, and he always talking about you. Ding, oh. ding, ding, ding. The Hi, bell rang. Craig. <laughs> Craig. Oh, he's just yeah. up one one of his electronic things from his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Now wait, wait a minute. Don't turn him on. Wait a minute. Now where started with Tommy Hilfiger? Yeah, Jay-Z. yeah. Tommy Hilfiger, Andy Hilfiger, Darlene Lowe, Steve Stout, Jay Z, Sean S- Russell Simmons, Sean Cones, P Diddy. You know what I mean? And uh, Andre Harrell, O'Neal McKnight. Jack Kiss, Jada Sam Kiss. Judah, Jada <laughs> Kiss, <laughs> Sam Judah, the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. You know what I mean? And uh, who else? Like Zab Jack Kiss. Zab Judah's a terrific. He player. is. A I like player. him. I like him a lot. Mary Thank J. You. Blige, you know, Little Jeezy, Johnny yeah. Nunez, yeah. Bow Wow. Everybody is coming on down there. So you know, That's and you heard it right here on what? It's gonna be good. You are gonna be right there. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be good. And you're gonna be mm-hmm. seeing a lot of your favorite sure celebrities ain't, ain't in the room. Nobody, you know, Jack. Here's your thousand dollar ticket right oh, now. Don. Yeah. Oh, Don. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm mm mm. Isn't this wonderful? Yes. Yes, I love being on Wendy's show. I mean, it makes me, it, it serves so many purposes because we got to be able to help inspire our people. Thank you, And God. Wendy is such a dynamic leader. And, you know, you know Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, <laughs> she's where she emanates from. Yes. Thank yes. you, Don. Thank you. Thank God you. bless America. Thank God you, Mr. bless Gates. Wendy. 866, get Wendy. And I love each and every one of you. Oh. <laughs> I was down and out when I came in here. Now I touched her. Now I see. I can dance. I can move. I'm alive. (laughs) Bye, Don. Congratulations. You look good, Don. You look like you took off a few pounds, I feel too. feel like I'm ready, yeah. Don. You look good. You look good. You look good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. No, he didn't just swivel his pelvis. Oh, man. Goodness. <laughs> Bye-bye, fellas. Love you, Take care. Love you, too, Don. <laughs> That wasn't that wasn't my usual Don though. No, not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. No. Yeah. Did you guys notice it? Yeah, he's used it up for you at the last minute. Yeah, but I, you know, I had to ask. I had to ask Don. You know, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. He's been to the show so many times. You know, and you see him on TV so many times and stuff. Mm-hmm. It must be hellified doing business with him though, because he does not look you in the eye. He's so trained to do business and to, you know. I guess dealing with all kinds of pieces. That's a shifty world that he works in. I guess he's got to be as shifty as everybody That's else. He's going to be distracted. And so, no, but it's, it's even more so than that. You know, the, the truth comes from the eyes. You know, you know, like, like Puffy wears the glasses to mask his truth and so on and so forth. And, you know, sometimes the eye contact, and I guess he's just trained not to look at eyes, get, just get the business done. 
in a half hour talking with him, I would say that he glanced at me maybe four times. And they were quick glances. So you can't see his soul. Yeah. Did you notice that? I noticed that. I mean, I was going to say it while he was in here, but I just said, no, let me, I don't want to call his attention to it. I just want to, I want an accurate tally when he leaves to, um, yeah, I don't want any candy. My gums hurt like Whitney Houston. Oh, I think my, my teeth might be loosening from my gums. I'm not sure. That's probably where I'll go in two Is weeks better? to the dentist. Now, I don't, said I don't want any candy. Why are you trying to give me Smarties? Okay. That's, that'll be my, in two weeks, that's the next medical team member that oh I'll go see. God. The dentist, yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, well, you know. There's always gum cancer. Wendy, your teeth are loosening from your skull because you've got gum cancer. You know, there's always, you know, in my mind, there's always something wrong. <laughs> oh, perfect sponsor for the hour. This hour of the show is brought to you by Affinity Health Plan. Health Plan is the best invention for people like me because I go broke going to see specialists. 100% of everything I've gotten done in the past 48 hours has been taken care of by health plan. No $5 copay. No, we only pay for 80%. You know, it's, you know, just thank God for health insurance. I didn't want to tell Don I won't be able to go to his roast. I'm going to be broadcasting from Philadelphia tomorrow. And it hurts me to tell you this, but the bonus hour is going to be a repeat tomorrow. They have no switch to keep it up so that we can, I can just talk to you during the bonus hour. Therefore, when 6 o'clock comes, you'll be getting the best of the bonus hour. Even though the four-hour show is going to be live, but I'll be in Philly. But I'll keep the same jokes. You know, I'll keep the humor going. I'll give you a temporary fax number for the day. You know, you fax me. We'll just keep the jokes going. Listen, tomorrow night in Philly, my radio station, Power 99, it's the big powerhouse concert. You know, it's Jay-Z, and he's bringing his friends. Supposedly, the friends are Jay to Kiss, and, you know, of course, Memphis Bleak and whatnot. Um, I think Nas might show up, and so on and so forth. So I'm going down there to broadcast live, you know, keep my, you know, my Philly um, the radio station happy and, you know, go down there and stuff. I says to my crime boss down there, I'm like, I mean, what are you, you, you bringing any of these people by to talk to me? Do I have to go all the way to Philly to, you know, ah, you know, <laughs> trap Jay-Z in a, you know, I hide behind the console. He comes in, he thinks he's interviewing with somebody else and I, you know, ah, gotcha, nigga. <laughs> you know, is that how it has to go? So she said, I don't know that anybody's going to come through. I'm like, well, you know, and then I can broadcast in New York and I'll, you know, see you after the show. So she said, well, stage time is 7 p.m. I said, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll broadcast from Philly. So I got to leave, like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock, really, if I want to do some of my old stomping ground shopping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know I will. Um, Cheese steaks and all that stuff? No. No, everything is not about food. Oh, got to eat. No, you got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a roll. Uh-oh. Thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. Ooh. I'm going to a um, Halloween party after this. Oh. Life and Style magazine. Oh, yeah. That's why you've been drinking Hennessy all day, and I de- de- haven't you noticed I haven't had anything? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had too much last night, A, and then B, and I, I, this is how I know that it was just all going on too much last night. First of all, clothes scattered all over the floor. Second of all, I slept in my rings. Do your fingers blow up while you sleep? I could not. I had to grease my fingers and grease them and grease them and <laughs> grease them this morning. You know, and I'm a pulling and a pushing and a pulling and a pushing oh. and the grease and I'm pulling and a pushing and more grease. Pull, pull, pull. No, push, 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 pull, push. The grease, the grease, the grease. Finally, ugh. Oh. I soak in ice. Everything shrinks down a little bit. I'm able to pull. I don't like it. I hate that. Slept in my hair clips the whole bit. You know. <laughs> I just gave up. I just gave up. You know, too much. That, that was my I'm going to live celebration last night. <sighs> All right, Goose, we're going to take a break. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, I have something to give away. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, by the way, did I hear correctly that Remy Martin's going to be uh, in Jersey for Thanksgiving weekend? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you know what? Thanksgiving weekend, I have people in town. Where? You don't know? More details to come. Oh. Well, shout out to Question Mark. And shout out to Carlin's Cut Up. Uh-oh. But shout out to you, Remy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love her, yes. Remy Martin. Listen, Tuesday, November 15th. Are you interested? I know you are. Nelly featuring the St. Lunatics at the Hard Rock Ooh. Cafe Live. Yes, exactly. It's a one-night stand brought to you by Budweiser and Budweiser Light. Call now. you got to be 21 or older. 866-GET-WENDY. 866-GET-WENDY! Yeah! Magnanimous. <laughs> Call that number now. <laughs> How, how old do you think Don is? I was going to ask. I didn't want to ask. Maybe like 68. His. No, Don's in his 70s. Really? I don't That's know. You, I would say it's more like 76. Well, he was when that pelvic muscle was kind of young. Yeah, but that's the 76, the new 56. There you go. There you, go. you see what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that, that's why, you know, you take care of yourself now and you can be one of these old youngs too. Oh. You know, old, mm -hmm. but young. Mm -hmm. That's what you. These vitamins. That's what you aspire to be. Yes. Old young. Old young. Yeah. When you're 50, you want to move like you're 30. When you're, you know, 60, you want to move like you're 50 or 40. You know, like that. Still able to enjoy life. Yes. Yes. Very much so. I like him. Yet there's something real oily about Don. You know what I mean? <laughs> like really oily and scary and dark. Well, he's flamboyant, you know. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. No, 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 that's not what I mean. That mm -hmm. there's something about him. I put I put my um, I put that in the same vein as Suge Knight. Like I love and I enjoy Suge Knight, but you know the oily slick stuff. Like I don't want to know that. I don't want to know. I'm not talking about for me personally. I'm just talking about like I don't even want to have that kind of conversation. I don't want to. You, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I enjoy the lighter side of, of uh, both men, but both men strike me the same way, you know, like, mm, you know. Yeah. yeah. Where? Back there. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like, like, I'm your friend, but over there. Not, not too close, because, you know, it could... Yeah, yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. Yeah, Suge Knight, Don King, they do, they both fit in that category. All right, guys, call up now to win those St. Lunatic tickets. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to wrap up the bonus hour. We're not going to have much time at all. We're going to have like two seconds. I'll take your phone calls, too, um, after these messages on WBLS. The levels, the levels, the levels is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your girl, Remy Martin, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. AutoZone. What's up? This is Brenda K. Starr, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Don King. Thank you, everybody, for being here. So, let's go to the phones, see what people are talking about. Hi, it's uh, BLS. Wendy, you're on the radio. Yes, hello, Wendy. Hello. Hi. Nice to I speak with you. I was calling about the ticket. Oh, we already got a winner. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got, a, yeah, we got that winner behind the scenes during the commercial break. All right. Thank All right, I just called to tell you I love you. I love you, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye bye. Hello, hi. You're on the radio. Hi, I was calling regarding the Nelly tickets. Okay, we already gave them away. Sorry, who won those actual tickets? I was I was in the other room uh, cutting a commercial. We'll give the name. Yeah, sorry about that. Thanks. Let's take somebody else. Please don't ask about the Nelly tickets. We already have a winner. The winner is Ernest Plaza of Flushing. So Ernest will be going and. Um, Look, the concert's on November 15th, so we've got more chances for you to win tickets. Hello, hi. Turn Raven, what's up, baby girl? Hey, Raven, everything's too loud in the background. Uh, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> Let me turn it off. Oh, no. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Sorry. He's I just called to tell you that, you know, I love you so much. You know that, right? Uh oh, here When we I go. say I listen to you for the whole five hours, Wendy. You do. From two until, yeah, because I work night. Yeah. So I'm able to listen to you for the entire five hours every single day. Day. Thank you, Raven. You're on my cough medicine when I'm sick. Thank, thank you, Raven. Wow. I hear that, Artie. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, baby. Thank and you, you have Raven. fun tomorrow at the Power um, 
thing you got going on over there. Yeah, in Philly. I love you, baby. Thanks, baby. I will baby. talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. And, um, yeah, and then I'm going to be at Amazora, actually, tomorrow night. You know, I'll be leaving Philly um, and hot tailing it back up the turnpike. Hello? Hello? Yeah, what's going on? It's Wendy. Oh, Wendy, I love you. Wendy. Yes, on, thank you. On your show, that was the best interview I have heard in a long time. Was it? Oh, my God, he is great. He, you, I love you. And I want to say yesterday, that was really nice, the girl winning the, um, the, 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 um, Auction oh, yes. And get an opportunity on your show. I think so many of us would love an opportunity like that. Yeah, and she had a good time at the comedy club, too. Really? Yeah, she, yeah, she ended up exchanging numbers with Trev Hollywood. Oh, and uh, and so, you know, I don't think they want us to keep them, keep you guys posted. So um, I, I won't. Well, that's great, Wendy. Wendy, I love you. And as for the caller that called in and was saying that um, rude comment that you made about her being on the show... When she wasn't trying to be on the show to entertain, that's nonsense. But we love you, okay? Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't know which caller that was. Hello? Hi, is it Wendy? Hi, speaking. Hey, Wendy. Oh, my gosh. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? How you doing? Uh, all right. Yes. Honey, I just want to just give you props. I live for your show. It's the best. Thank you. And you're the best. I love you, honey. Keep up the good Thank work. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I have something in front of me that says most 20-something women prefer silence during sex and would go all the way for money. That's that's a, a new survey done. The results of an internet, uh, internet sex poll. I'll give you the rest tomorrow. It was done through Jane Magazine. And uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I hear the keys are in the, are in the ignition. Vaughn Harper's on deck. Next batter up, Vaughn Harper. Yes. With the quiet storm. I'm going to get out of here. But it sounds like you can still see the door. Thank God. I'm going to see myself out. And uh, talk to you guys tomorrow. Don't forget the bonus hour tomorrow is going to be a best of. But you want to know what I wanted for the best of? I requested that Hollywood put in the Jimmy J.J. Walker. I realized that it was just last week that he was here. But a lot of people didn't hear it. You know, apparently he rubs a lot of people the wrong way. David Allen Greer. Uh, you know, I, David was here earlier along with Drew Frazier. And both gentlemen... Uh, uh, had they, they while they didn't say anything bad about Jimmy J.J. Walker, they, they didn't, didn't say anything, say good. anything good. I'll tell you behind the scenes talk too later, but yeah. Can you talk now? We are behind the scenes. This is the bonus hour. Oh, These are our special oh, friends. Yeah, talk. I, I brought up Jimmy Walker as well, and they had they, they didn't give him any mercy. I said, yeah, I feel sorry for Jimmy Walker because you know he's a lonely guy, has no no mate, whatever. I was telling him some of the things he was telling me, and he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, Jimmy, he's you know he's like in his own world. He told me about an incident that happened when he got actually booed and stuff like so. They, what you know, happened? Uh, he was he was on stage. And he, Get on the mic. He was on stage and he mentioned uh, his first act was about um, something that was dated like ten years prior, about something ten years dated prior. Yes. And it was like, oh my gosh, this guy is just like he runs the same act for like the past fifteen years. Yeah, right. right. So yeah, yeah. Right. Basically, like, okay. Oh, sorry. Goose. Wow. The time wow. Yeah. All right, uh, you all. <laughs> well, gotta go. Don't forget, uh, 7.30 tonight is the first show over there at the Linden Theater with David Allen Greer and the fabulous Drew Frazier. And 9.30 again, they're doing a show. So shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. You all go out there and support that. Me? Oh, I got a party to go to. Then I'm going home. And you're living. And I'm living. I can see. Hallelujah. I can see. I can swallow. Oh. (laughs) Well, you know. It's good to be a female. It's good to be a woman. (laughs) (laughs) All righty, everybody. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day.